right. Hello. Welcome to Adventures and Lollygagging and Friends. We are back to playing Fragged Empire tonight. We're continuing our Infinite Spaces campaign. Uh, Captain Dr. T uh, is leading the uh, the crew uh, in a group of a very important Nephilim emissaries uh, to pirate infested space. And I'm sure nothing nothing terrible will happen. I'm sure the cheat sheet for space combat that I dropped into Discord will not come into play at all. I'm sure no. everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it's just a, just a typing exercise. Just, yeah, you know. just an FYI. <laughs> Joe had it's like one of those loading idea. screen hints that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, Joe had such a good idea. I was walking away when you before we got in here. He's just like, he's like, we're gonna get it repoed. I'm like, damn it, that's what have been the perfect space combat. Someone coming to try to repo Posh out. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? That's such a good idea. Dude. Let's steal that one. Anyhow, that'll Gosh, be the end spoilers. of spoilers. That's that'll be the end of the campaign. It'll be like a Monty Python moment where we're just like, that's it, you're done. Like you're mid mid <laughs> mid mission. Someone just comes and takes your pot, your 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 ship. And you guys are just I floating in space ship somewhere. In game and, and, and out of game pods. then. Oh, uh, there we go. We got uh, we got we got a story ready to go. All right, we're gonna dive in because uh, uh, I got a lot of stuff I want to do. So uh, let's start with summary, and then we're gonna do intro stuff uh, in game. Uh, as we go. So last time around, uh, we were taking care of final business uh, on the Alabaster Space Station's attack. You managed to direct various revenue authorities to one of Jacob Flint's aliases after uh, after Kill managed to intimidate a repo crew uh, and prevent them from actually taking the ship. Uh, Dr. T, you helped get Deacon Ottawa and his team. Uh, that is a, a security specialist, uh, Sass Katoon. And uh, special emissary uh, to humans, uh, win a peg. Uh, you got them all set on the post chat. Kill, you installed some extra cryo chambers from, for jump transit because you're going to need that. Uh, Maya, you arranged for the artist formerly known as Dio to construct a mechanics workshop on the ship. But uh, they mistook Jita's bunk uh, for open space. And that's where they built it. And no one said anything. So Jita doesn't have anywhere to sleep now. Uh, Maya, you also arranged for a, a modest contract, uh, with body count, uh, allowing you access to various stream packages and advert feeds. Uh, eventually you all left the crew, uh, or excuse me, left the station, traveled over to the Liberty belt within the Haven system. You went over to the Haven, you're heading to the Haven Kasuf jump gate. Cause remember you were heading to the Kasuf system, but along the way, Sateas, your, uh, your Palantor mine palace, uh, slash, uh, computer, uh, alerted everyone to a very small but continuous degradation of your hull integrity. Hull integrity. And uh, after some quick investigation, you found that there was a series of, of hacked mining drones from Dre Mining uh, that had mistaken your ship for an asteroid and had begun drilling you. Uh, so as a tech and kill, you went on a space walk. You tried to rip one of them free, but there's all these little anti-tamper uh, subroutines. And so as a tech got electrocuted inside... My favorite part of this summary. Maya saved Boris from a potential hull breach in the Arboretum, but left Franklin and Harriet to die. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> Gina was able to dig. I think it was Gina and maybe Dr. T as well. You were able to dig into public schematics for the drones. You found some data. You forwarded this attack. He was able to physically access the internal bios, turn off all this kind of stuff. A daisy chain, kill you, shot... You had a, a once in a lifetime shot where you shot through a hole as a tech made for himself and you hit a panel and then he was able to access it. And all the while, Deacon was observing Captor, Captain Dr. T, assessing uh, his skills. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start uh, with a, uh, a little montage as we are. Remember, we are going into a living Nephilim gate. So I shared the image last time around. Uh, it is a gargantuan sized Nephilim floating in space uh, that on the Haven side you have consistent control over. And every now and then you see the, that giant Nephilim creature just kind of expends, extends its arms or its tentacles. And then you see this kind of orange light open up and you see some ships go through. There's a little bit of a wait to get into there, but uh, over time, uh, over maybe the course of like a couple hours, you, uh, you wait to get kind of approval and such as they ramp the, uh, the Nephilim up cause they don't want to overwork it. And then eventually you and a couple of their ships go together and you enter into, uh, the jump gate window and we see this big flash of light 
uh, and then your ship is now in jump space travel. So you're going to be here for a couple weeks. Uh, so what I'm going to say is uh, to move things along, we're going to say everyone one by one kind of goes in the cryo. This is sort of generally how, how travel happens. Uh, so what I would like you to do, we're going to go this one by one really quick. What do you think your dream? What do you think your character dreams about? Why in cryo? So so we're going to start. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're <laughs> we're going to start with Cheetah. Sorry, Melissa. I know you hate me in the first, but I did roll a four. <laughs> as soon as you reacted, I was like, oh, that's me. That's so, me. So what do you think as you, as Jita uh, loads up into her cry, we assume all of your Nephilim emissaries are taken care of first and then the rest of you and then whoever else you want to take care of, Boars, definitely not Franklin or Harriet, you know, and, uh, and, and kills, and, and uh, kills Goro too. Uh, all these different things are to take care of. So Jita, what is it, what does it look like as you go in? What do you dream about while you're in cryo? So Jita just uh, built herself a, a fort uh, to sleep in uh, with a big sign on the outside that says uh, Jita's only keep out. Um, so I would imagine in her dream, she's like building her like dream bunk somewhere. So, you know, there's this like almost um etch a sketch style like artistry that's happening with this kind of like house ship spaceship thing made out of metal that's kind of slowly coming together in her mind with like all of these little you know stuff for like astronomy and astrometrics and you know all the different um, workshops and all of the fun things that she would have to work on all the time and I would like to imagine that when she's like has moved in and is sort of looking out of it she sees because she's she's mad at Deo at the moment that like somewhere this turns into a like looking out the window and seeing Deo's like crappy little place somewhere like off in the distance and she like feels better about herself Okay, so as we fade out of Gina's hate dreaming, uh, let's check in with the tech. <laughs> the tech, what do you? What does the tech dream about during like long gaps of cryo or whatnot? Yeah, uh, I've thought a little bit about what I think Zhao even dream because their brains are a little different. Yeah. So I, I picture their dreams being a lot more uh, sporadic, and. I just picture him. He's been thinking a lot about like business and corp stuff. So I just picture him in like a mostly empty room <laughs> wearing like a very thrown together suit. He's like, yes, business. <laughs> and just talking to just random people <laughs> that are just saying random business it's buzzwords. Coming. You shake a hand <laughs> and they just leave. <laughs> it's, it's like one of those surreal dreams where people are just kind of like sliding. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! You just see words pop up. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Okay. Stuff like that. <laughs> okay. As a dream about getting a flesh pot finally, uh, okay. Sateus getting like implanted into it. Okay. But, yeah, that's mainly what's on his mind. So we go from the flesh bot slash business dream uh, to Doctor T. What does Doctor T dream about in his long voyage oh. through? Yeah, it's. Uh... He dreams about all the fun modifications he would just really love for Kill. Uh, his current one is he's dreaming up plans of, you know, Kill can shoot guns real good with his hands, but what if I removed some of those pesky tendons from his toes and like maybe extended a few and he could shoot guns with his feet too. That's really smart. It's, it's really like, nice that you that you take such good care of your dad like this. You know, it like is, you really it support is. him. I want That's him to great. be around as long as possible, which means lots of unethical body modification when he mm -hmm. doesn't expect it. Sure. Okay. So as we see the various various experiments on kills toes, uh, who who would have thought that Chuck has a has a dream about feet? <laughs> Uh, we go over oh. Maya. <laughs> Maya, <laughs> what are you dreaming about during cryo? 
I think uh, Maya is doing uh, the only thing she's really been thinking about, which is to get her stream members back up. And uh, she is envisioning herself as one of the Octanto Corp uh, models. Uh, and then as the Corp spec ops that like threw her out of the offices. So just like different iterations of Maya in Octanto Corp stuff. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. So. Do you, is there, is there also hate dreaming in there where you see like the oh, lobby no, people it's from Oh no, aspirational. Like okay. the text was very ironically business, hers is actually business. <laughs> okay. It's very positive. I like it. Aspirational. Excellent. And then uh, finally, uh, Papa Krug, uh, what is, uh, what is Kill dreaming about during his time? It starts off almost in like gray, black and white, like a, the perfectly regimented day, everything going according to plan up until about the point that he's like, you know, rinsing his face or something in the mirror. And then the mirror kind of turns into one of those memory crystals and there's like multiple different versions. And he seems to disagree with something that's in that and kind of goes through the mirror and then things just continue to divert and divert. And there's so many different di versions of how he remembers things. And there's more color, though, the more different winding paths he goes through. So it goes from like black and white, perfectly regimented to just madness through the looking glass. It's For him, it's a trippy. nightmare. Yeah, it sounds super trippy and chaotic. Okay. All right. So, so this is what's kind of going through on about a two week journey is about what it is because the jump gate has the amount of time. Normally we'd be at about a four week journey, but it cuts yours in half and at a certain point, uh, fairly late in that journey, uh, Captain Dr. T and uh, Papa Kill, uh, you you feel your dreams starting to fade away and you come a little groggily, start to come to. Everything's kind of foggy at first. Uh, you can feel the, the cold of the cryo starting to dissipate and feel a little bit of a hunger start to overtake you. Uh, you can see the little lights of the cryo monitoring pod uh, indicating that you are in fact alive. So good on you. Uh, and nice. then moments later, you hear a, a familiar voice. It is Zateas. Uh, and he'll communicate to, to both of you uh, into your pods. And you can kind of get them to get kind of shot in through. Um, Captain Dr. T and... Uh, Mr. Kill, uh, there is, well, something abnormal um, happening in the Thermalix egg hatchery. Uh, we have been tracking um, a group school family of proto jump plankton through the stream. One seems to have somehow entered the ship and is now currently in the Thermalix egg hatchery, which uh, Mr. Kill, as you know, is highly incendiary and a threat to the ship. I thought it best to wake the two of you so that you might inquire about how you could stop that from happening. I'll go deal with the problem directly if you don't mind getting everybody else awake. Yep, sounds like a plan. Okay. So, Dr. T, one by one, you start waking everybody up. Kill, I you get over the... Do what? not oh. wake the delegates. Okay, fair enough. Okay. They stay night-night. All right. Kill, you uh, make it to the, the egg hatchery. It's not an issue. It's just connected to your armory and everything. Uh, and there, you see a glowing, massive, translucent, like, creature that's just swimming and floating um, in the air. It almost looks in some ways like the Farron that you encountered uh, when you were on Hypnos, if that even happened. Uh, but you can see like their colors are like shifting and pulsing and they're constantly changing here and there. And you can see that it is essentially wrapped itself in some ways around one of the Thermalix eggs. Now, these are mines uh, that explode. Mm -hmm. So they are Nephilim, you know, they're Nephilim weapons. And this thing is is interacting with it currently um and you're the the mines are quite large too like they're not these aren't small things uh, like think of it like a big old portageon or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um 
So you get a beat before everyone else will come into this. So what's what does what does kill do here before anyone else pops in? Uh, hey there, my guy. Uh, uh, hello, do you, do you understand me? Uh, and you do that because he can make his armor change colors. He's done the goofy thing before with Jeter where he tried to match her thing. He'll <laughs> yeah. fall back on doing that again, like making the armor rapidly change colors. So he's like, uh, hey there, okay. little fella. Maybe you want to come play over here instead, whatever you are. Um, hey, okay. give me a culture test. Uh, to see <laughs> if this somehow, yeah, if what you're doing. It. Well, I mean, you never know. Like, you could be making, you know, peace, or you could be, uh -huh. you know, telling it to go. <laughs> you know, it could be go take a flying leap. All right, up a short pier. I okay. Well, I've got a six, two, and a one. I'll re-roll that one. Okay, spend some effort. Uh, so that's that gets me to a twelve. Twelve is all you need. So as you start oh, rapidly shifting, I have a minus two though, so I go down to a ten. Oh, okay. Well, that definitely. Doesn't I'm going to grit it. I, I really <laughs> would prefer to get this thing away from okay. the mine. It's worth okay. it. Worth one try. Sure. I mean, if if it blows up, we're ending early tonight. So. <laughs> okay. Well, this we also one, have audience grit if needed. Good, good use of grit. I feel. I like. will. Oh yeah. man, I'm so close. I'll use it. The, then that's for one dice, right? Yeah. Uh, just one. Okay. The audience is just one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, that's perfect. That actually works out great. So that gets me up to a fourteen, down to a twelve. Okay. Just skin on my teeth. Twelve okay. is all you need. You see it <sighs> unwrap itself from around this thermolix egg, and it begins to unfurl. And this thing is, uh, think of it like a like a, a glowing giant like cloud that you can see through. And it's taking up probably half the room and it can kind of shift and change shape and it begins to float in your direction, mimicking and, and kind of flickering with the colors and wraps itself around you. So at this mm -hmm. point, I'll say the rest mm -hmm. of you are awake. Dr. T probably debriefed. What do the four of you do? <laughs> um, Jita would, I guess, run to... Um, where Kill is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if it's going to explode, we want to be right there. That way, you know, we get it over with quick. Maya's I, going I... to the command room. Okay, going up to the bridge? Okay. All right. Thank you. I couldn't remember that word. For <laughs> the <bridge. laughs> there was a word the other day I could not remember in a game. Scrubs! My... Scrubs! But scrubs, yeah. I could not remember <laughs> scrubs for the life of me. Like, that, oh my god. <laughs> uh, Zatek, uh, what are you up to? So Jita, Dr. T are going to join Kill. Maya went to the bridge. What is Zatek doing? Mm -hmm. What? So how is Kill interacting with it? You it's wouldn't know for sure. Now. Yeah, when, Kill... when you get there. Yeah. Okay. Kill's doing his best to like slowly walk away from the mines now that it's wrapped around him. But he's probably a little freaked out because he doesn't understand what this thing is. And it's apparently big and weird. And... Um... I want to try and figure out what it is, I think, like a culture okay. test or something. Uh, uh, it would not be a culture test, uh, but you Go could buy it, or, maybe it would probably I would take a, I would actually take astronomy. I would in this okay. case. Uh, yeah. And I'll say while you're rolling that, Maya, you go up to the bridge, and the bridge is one of the places that actually has a viewing viewing ports and such. And you can see out them, it's it's jump space. You see that constant stream. But you also notice that whatever creature that Dr. T conveyed to you, that Sateus conveyed to him, you can see that there's about a dozen more outside in the stream, all kind of weaving back and forth in front of you, alongside of you. You can see some of the other ships that you had traveled with uh, they're also kind of contending with this as well. So there's just a whole mess of them. And I would say also you would notice on your on your on your various terminals, like there's no like red alerts going on. It doesn't seem like it's interfering with like engines or anything just yet. But, you know, it's on the ship and kind of weaving through walls and going through systems. So there is potential danger. Um, let me check back in with Zatek. Zatek, how'd you do? I got a 16. Okay, so um, 
you would say that these very much actually might be wild farin of some kind, uh, but maybe not. Like, it's hard to say because there's so little known about farin to, to begin with, uh, but they don't look as as sparkly and flickery as like you would or as large as you've seen maybe some Twifar ships and things like that. Like if you had to guess, this might be like an like an embryonic or or sort of youthful stage for maybe the Farron. Like it just that just makes sense. Like you're not sure, but that would yeah. probably be your your theory just looking at them. Okay. Uh with that I'm gonna say, Gina, I think it's the Farron thing, you should talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so Jita will kind of come up um, and sh- would this be like a psychology or a biotech or well, like to, to try to um, she wants to do her communication with her Farron kind of with her you know kind of enter- like kind of the little okay. glowing kind of stuff that she can do um, so it's kind okay. of similar to what Kill was doing but with her Farron but actually with some knowledge of what you're doing. So we'll say the <laughs> Theoretically. door opens up into the hatchery area and Dr. T, Judy, you go and you can see there is Kill. He has got this thing wrapped around him. Not like a snake, but more just like, it's it's more like a thick, heavy blanket that's just sort of wrapped around him. You can still see him and Kill, you can still see out and, and you don't feel like pressure on you, but you do feel like this little static of electricity. You can feel this kind of energy that seems to be interacting with you. And even your lights start to sync with it. So the lights on your armor, like you start to lose control over them. And the Farron, whatever this thing might be, is actually the thing that seems to be shifting and changing the color. So Jita, okay, you, ste- you step in and you see just that. Mm-hmm. Deep breaths, deep mm-hmm. breaths. And she's gonna look at mm-hmm. Kill. Deep breaths. Mm-hmm. Watch, watch me. And so like, as she's kind of taking the breath, you also see kind of the colors, you know, kind of the glowing kind of coming up and can you match me? It's kind of messing with my armor. I'll try. So can she do, yeah, um, what do you want to do? Some, um, persuasion. I was thinking she's sec- trying to do. Yeah, I was trying to do like a psychology to just try to see what it appears to be trying to communicate by encircling kill. Sure. Yeah. Just roll roll psychology. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13. Okay. Uh, as far as you can really tell with it, it just seems curious. Like it hasn't demonstrated anything threatening, but it strikes you a little bit like a you know, like like a like a small animal or a young child kind of poking and prodding at things that just look interesting that they've maybe not seen before. Like, it doesn't look threatening. While you think on that, let me check in with Maya really fast. Maya, you're up on the bridge. You see this. I'm assuming you're all are updating each other and what's happening. Maya, yeah. is there anything you want yeah. to do up here? Uh, apart from what everybody you know on intercom, like, uh, you should come to the bridge. There's some stuff out here that you should see. Uh, what, one, one second, one second. We've got some sort of uh, toddler creature give and kill a big old bear hug right now. Not bear, mm. uh, feron hug of sorts. We gotta uh, find a playpen for that first. Just. He was He's really fine. enjoying the mines. It's not playing with the mines anymore. Do you need first. me to come down there? You're fine. You're fine. Um, and she'll sort of look to, doc- to Dr. T. Uh, Captain, doctor. And she looks around for any of the um, other Nephilim around and doesn't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got some kind of a empty crate or something. Maybe we can try to get this thing to just sit in its little chair off to the side got something empty yeah i mean we got all the storage cubbies that the ducks were in oh good well i didn't somebody turn one of those into a reading nook is there another one that's still empty we did turn it into a reading nook we can loan the reading nook for now it's fine oh oh yes we can use the reading nook we can put put it in the reading nook maybe yeah. you can read not sure if okay. not it's Let's... a reading nook we can teach it to read okay <laughs> Give me a okay, psychology so... test as you try to coax it 
or persuasion, <laughs> excuse me, persuasion test as you and Dr. T, T try to coax it away from Kill. Uh, Kill and Dr. T, actually, if you wanted to roll an assist, if you wanted to roll like Psych, yeah. try to hit a 10, you can give her some bonuses on this. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm not the persuasive one. I'm the Psych one. It's okay. If anybody else uh, is. Uh, Kill and Dr. T can both roll come down. with a target number of 10. <laughs> But Maya, one thing you do know is why you're up here is you see that the other ships that entered into the gate with you, you see they disappear. The other one disappears. So like three of them that you had been, like the four of you have been kind of coming together. This is not uncommon for these gates. Just disappear. Now, um, you would you don't have to roll for this. You would know that they've dropped out of jump. Like they've literally left jump drive and jump space. Okay. Uh, ha, so, so Dr. T, you give, okay, so that's a, yeah. so you get a bonus from, from Dr. T plus one from Dr. T kill. Did you yeah, want to try 11. to do 11? That's also good enough. Yeah. So plus two, Jita. Okay. So that means it's a straight roll instead of a negative roll. Uh, yay. So yay. Persuasion. All right. That's a, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, so that's an 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I have a six if I need it for anything. No, nah, it's good. It's plenty Ooh. good. Uh, so you are able to very much coax this small little toddler-like Farron, if that's what it is, away and out of the hatchery. And you lure it into this uh, this small little cubby. Uh, and it is there anything you leave in there with it to try to make it stay? Y- y- yes. Not sure what that Kill would be. Kill it like exactly. your armor. Strip down and toss that in there. <laughs> That avoid. I'll give it the duck. <laughs> <laughs> Kill just starts squeezing all the little ducks in front of it instead. You give it all the drugs? Jeez. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the ducks. The little ducks. I wonder if it likes there. music. And I want to try playing the. the <laughs> Dick always wants thing. to solve problems with music. I love it. <laughs> this is the over, and he starts playing his little device. Kill's giving him ducks. Dr. T is trying to undress <laughs> Kill to get okay, him out of ducks. his armor. And while that's happening, uh, like Maya, you've seen what you've seen up there. And like in a few moments, uh, you hear, hello, Dr. Captain T. We were alerted by your mind computer that there was a disruption. Yes, unknown alien life form smuggled aboard ship during faster than light travel. And we have currently trapped it in a reading nook and are playing with it with rubber ducks. I see. This sounds like an excellent stimulation study. Please make sure to document all your observations and report them back to the emissary at the end and conclusion of this mission. Will do. You are welcome to return to sleepy time. You hear Zateas pop in. Captain Dr. T, we are actually nearing the end of our jump travel. We will be the next hour dropping out of jump drive. Don't tell them that. Oh, that was broadcast. (laughs) Apologies, Captain Dr. T. I was not aware of the new communication protocols. I will amend them now. You're doing great, Stas. Thank you, Zatek. <laughs> so, currently, you guys have so about when an hour. We, uh, uh, I have a meta question, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. we leave Jump Space, as we are planning to do, um, mm-hmm. will the will that get rid of what's on the ship? Who knows. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, if it was so a physical I'm get thing, on the intercom with these guys again, saying, "Seriously, someone needs to come here and see these." Fine, and I'll flutter my way up there. And a few minutes later, you're up on the bridge. You can see, like, it's a this big school of of these similar creatures, and they're all kind of flickering and here and there. Um, I definitely uh, made Jordan to get whatever, like. Oh yeah, yeah. You can get no problem. You yeah. can have that. And you can see the big body game. count conglomerate branding on yeah. your. Uh, it's got the overlay. <laughs> yeah, the watermark in the corner. There's more of yeah. them outside. 
That's what we're seeing, right? More of these glowy things outside? You do, yeah. Zateus, prepare photon torpedoes. Captain Doctor I mean, T, we do not the have same one photon that you saw torpedoes. Inside? Uh, I want to try and lead this thing now off of our ship. Like, I think this thing, sh- like, because it's moving through walls and stuff, I think it should be out there with them. Nope, it's an orphan now. It belongs to us. <laughs> so, Tech, how do you want to do that? What do you want to try to do? I want to try and Pied Piper it with this uh, music thing. Okay. All right. Uh, you cert- Go ahead and give me a check. Let's see if you can do this. <laughs> Um, what were we doing okay. for that? I'm trying to remember. Electronics, I think. I think it was electronics. Yeah, yeah I think it was electronics too, because it's electrical. It so you're you're using this Mondian mus- musical device or whatever the hell it is. I would yeah. not have guessed at character creation that the tech was going to be so musically. I driven. do. I love the running <laughs> gag of constantly using music. Oh, ten. I've got one more grit left. Okay. Uh, we have actually. Do we have audience? Grit. We do. we do. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll spend one audience grit to reroll that one. Okay. Okay. Just need a three. Got your six. Hey. Okay. That'll put you. That'll put you at like a fifteen or something. I think so. Yeah, fifteen. Uh, so that'll be a success. So, uh, so we'll say you you head over like where where this thing is now hiding is within this little smuggling nook in your cargo bay, and you do have and it's which is right next to the the exit uh so like there is a cargo bay door and all that kind of stuff for loading loading uh bigger bigger stuff and so you come up to it it's you see it swirling around and encompassing the various ducks but as you start to play this music and don't forget that as you play the music like there's different colors that start to light up when you touch each of the hexes and you Mm -hmm. lure it out and as you expected it moves through the wall it doesn't doesn't really concern itself with the doorway it just comes right through the wall and you come to the edge, the, the you know the, the the rear of the ship. And you're standing right there, and you're playing, and you're playing, and it starts to wrap itself around you. How do you get it out of the ship, though? You don't have to roll again. Just uh, give if it's me trying to wrap itself idea. around me, I'm gonna try and spin my body like into the wall so that most of its mass is like okay going out. So you spin, and so like as it's starting to wrap, much like it was doing around kill, half of the the taper of this this giant like you know plankton worm thing uh, goes outside, and you see it just suddenly suck directly out the back and disappear behind you, and you have succeeded in getting rid of this thing. <laughs> Such a Sweet. good job. I'm picturing it in my head like a piggyback ride, and then you just like <laughs> dip back. Yeah. Okay. So, as it, it seems as though you've been able to get it off the ship, Maya, you can still see that there's this school of stuff. They don't seem to be in, you know, attacking you or engaging you or anything like that. And like another twenty or thirty minutes goes by with your checking on stuff. The emissaries come. Uh, Deacon is assessing what's happening and you can see the emissary Winnipeg is interviewing each of you and asking specific detailed focused questions about how Dr. Captain T performed in such a crisis and was really and like you can see they have a like a tablet out and they're they're assessing and writing all of your observations down and it's at that point where Zateus will uh, will notify everyone uh, T minus 60 seconds before dropping out of jump please uh, proceed to a safe uh, a safe seat and strap in yes okay. okay we'll do astronomy lab for Jita. okay so it's gonna receipt <laughs> go to your gunner receipt it's my um, old man chair yeah go up to your old man chair which just perfectly contours with uh uh, with your body over the years, it's just got it's got kills giant old man ass. It's just perfectly carved oh, out get up in the, the seat. And so, oh, well, you know, got to hold the cat up. still too. Yeah, cat's there. Yeah. You got it wrapped up. Uh, I'm assuming Jita's got tech. boars. Okay, Jita's got boars. Someone taking care of uh, of Franklin and Harriet. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're like shunning Maya. They keep looking away. Yeah, I can't even look at her. <laughs> it's fair. My ghosts are trying to get them, them, and they look away. Like, oh, 
<laughs> so the transition happens, and you all have been this through this before. It's a little bit jarring as you see, as you've been flying through this, this, this channel of light, and then you see in front of you this rectangular orange portal manifests. You can see all of these, this different school of planting. Those of you who are on the bridge or near a viewing port, you can see they kind of flank around it like they don't want to go through it. And you watch yourselves just plunge directly in. This big, bright light uh, happens to anyone, again, viewing it. All of you sort of feel the reverberations, uh, the shuddering. And then within like two seconds of your eyes beginning to come back, for those of you who are looking out a window, you start to feel like your ship just is kind of like rumbling, continuing much too long, like turbulence. And you... All of you watch as your lights, your various emergency lights begin to uh, begin to turn on like your normal lights go down. The red lights pop up as as might you imagine. And suddenly like this alarm starts going off one after the other. And like is a chaos in a, like kind of a, a panicked kind of in a panicked voice, if you can if you can believe it. Uh, and like calls in like a multiple proximity warnings, Dr. Captain T multiple proximity warnings. And then you can, then as like they're communicating, like radio chatter starts picking up and you can hear the sounds of like maydays coming in SOSs. Then suddenly you hear like this reverberation on the starboard side of your ship. And you, all of you just do that classic Star Trek thing where you just, your bodies just get thrown around for a brief moment. And you just feel like your power dip down on that side before Zateus is able to like redivert and kind of bring it back up. Then there's this massive screech that just comes radiating through all of the various communications. Like all of you hear it in your ears, all of you kind of get it through your communication systems. Dr. T, I need you to roll a resolve test. Uh, okay. As Dr. T and, and all of the, and anybody who is near any of these, these feral Nephilim are like, as this like horrific pain starts like raking through them. Uh, how'd you do that, Dr. T? 14. Uh, 14 is a, is just enough for a success. Uh, so you can go ahead and not take awful damage. Uh, so oh, what you would have uh, taken. Nice. Uh, Emissary Winnipeg failed. And so you can see she doubles over in pain and you can, you can see she starts coughing up this kind of black gunk. You can see her ears and her eyes begin to leak. Uh, then Saskatoon's totally fine. And then Deacon Ottawa is fine as well. So like only only Emissary Winnipeg is on the ground. And in Deacon Ottawa, it's like the feral Nephilim that floats. And anybody who's in the bridge, give me a, a sensors test. Uh, not a sensors test, uh, what's it called? Operations test uh, to do a quick scan of your sensors. So anybody who is who who you think is up there is fine. I got a sixteen. Operations. Okay. Nice. Uh, Fifteen. Okay, so the two of you who are up, you're up on the bridge right now. Everything's going nuts. Like the alarms going off and going off and left and right. You can see like your your ship is constantly thuttering. Like Zateus is 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 like just talking about a collision warning, collision warning, another collision warning, uh, SOS, SOS. And you can see all these different signals are starting to bombard you one after the other. And Maya and Dr. T, when you get on the consoles, you can see a few things. First, you can see that there's debris everywhere around you. So we'll say Maya, you can see there's just debris. There's signs in, of like there was some kind of recent uh, recent explosion. You can even hear the sounds cascading through the sensors of like collapsing bulkheads, just like bumping through the, the various, uh, like the various, the various sounds, like people calling out for, uh, for help. You can see some of it were people that you were in transit with, but then you also hear other voices coming through. You hear the sound, you hear like the, the voice of, of, of some, uh, of what sounds like a legion, uh, just calling out for help. The bloody pirates are taking out our escape pods. We need help. And like just screaming and screaming and no one's like really responding. Dr. T, your result, when you're kind of going through your various sort of sensor suite, you can see that something's going on with the giant living feral Nephilim. The difference between this side, the Kasuf side of this gate, and the Haven side is that the Haven side, it's a, it's a you know, domesticated, essentially. Here, it's yeah. feral. And they insert these giant control rods into the brain to keep it numb and doing what it wants to do. And you can see that the feral Nephilim is waking, and it's sending out some sort of screech, this 
crazy, horrific screech. And with your 16, with unexpected consequences, I also tell you that you notice signals from multiple feral Nephilim ships all around you in this jump space as you just came in. They're ripping and tearing apart. You can just like some of the others, but they're here. It's almost as if like this gate is serving as some kind of beacon. Um, oh, the tech, Jita and kill one action. What would you do in this situation? One action. And it does count. So this isn't just like flavor. Like what would you want to do in this situation? Oh, goodness. Uh, go ahead, kill. No, you first. Uh, Jita is going to want to try to get a full like scan of the area. So okay. you know, usually that's kind of what mm -hmm. she's she's doing. OK, uh, you could do an operations test. It's totally fine. Uh, then uh, kill. What are you doing? So we haven't actually seen who it is. We just have the we've heard that warning. Basically, this is all like first 30 seconds of coming out of the gate. So oh, everyone's right. collecting data right now. So what would you want to do, Kill? Uh, I'm assuming people are going to be up on us. Are there, is there indication that there are other ships of the ones that we came with that are around us, or is it basically just us here? From what you got from Maya, Maya was able to do yeah. a quick scan, and she noticed that the signatures of some of the ships that you were in the fleet with, mm -hmm. like they are broken down. They're decoupling, uh, and like you're not getting any kind of pings back. The only voice that she was able to get was some mm -hmm. was some voice from some legion ship which you weren't in a fleet with there was no legion ship yeah. with you it's just a series of like merchant vessels and things like that okay well exploratory if, if i wasn't worried that there might be survivors from those ships i would deploy some of the uh the weird little nephilim mines to keep people okay. from coming up on us so, so if, if you want to the start possibility that there's survivors i don't want to do that if there's okay. a way i could drop into an area that doesn't seem inhabited so you could probably just do like a, a like a check to make sure your weapons are ready. Like the way those mm -hmm. mechanically work is that they literally Yeah, I saw one around. where you can get your munitions ready, like get things armed. Yeah, so yeah, just give me be... just give me a gunnery Real test, essentially, shot. just okay. to ensure we're not we're not in combat yet, guys. We're just doing a quick <laughs> or just like looking. A, yeah. jumping into it. So like I'm just yeah. wanting to know like what would kill what's the immediate thing kill would do as you come in? My initial need to rest is do I have a good place to deploy the mines to keep you from like sneaking up on us? You, you're no. coming out of the gate, so if you yeah. drop it, you're you're gonna be dropping it at the gate entrance. <laughs> yeah. So no, you're just have things it ready because I don't know yet what okay. to do. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the tech, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Um. So did it seem like we heard the signal too, but it doesn't seem to be bothering us? Is that coming through? It, like you can hear power? it, but you can see that it's having a much bigger impact on the Nephilim crew members. Like even Doctor T right. felt it, though he was able to resist. And same with Deacon. But you can see on the on the bridge, like the emissary Winnipeg, she's doubled over. She's like she's essentially mm -hmm. dropping gook out of her eyes. So what would you do? Does it seem like it's coming through like the comms that's being flooded or? Yes. Yes, you can okay. see it's coming through comms, coming through sensor, like all of your sensor data, your both auditory okay. and anything that's just coming in, you can see is just being overwhelmed by some sort of signal being outputted by one of those giant creatures that you just came through. Okay, that's what I want to spend my action doing is trying to like filter that signal down as much as possible so it's not debilitating our Nephilim people. Okay, uh, you can just roll an electronics test, honestly, like electronics test to try to okay. shut down like the signal or at least kind of mute it out. Yeah. Uh, 14. Okay. So not only are you able to do that, I'll say you also, you do the classic, like, shut that freaking alarm off, and you shut the alarm off, and the mm -hmm. alarm starts going off. And once that does, all of your, your sensor equipment starts coming back. Like, you were using it, but you can see that it was sluggish, and it wasn't giving you all of the data that you need to give you, which means I'm going to go ahead and bring you over this little map. And so you can hey. see where you all are at. Map so was we are Whoa. going to try we're gonna try this damn we're gonna try some spaceship combat tonight so space combat. Is this us? yeah that is you so let me walk you through it so you all are this little blue glowy ship right there you're facing like where those two guns are kind of not guns i'm not sure what they are but those two gun things that's your that's your front and you can see the engines in the app behind you is the gate that you just came out of uh 
on this uh, this next ping over here, you can see off to, you know, according to the map, just north of you, is one of these feral Nephilim ships that is being ripped apart or like has been ripped apart, Dr. T. Um, and you can see that it's in a, in a state of, in a state of, like it's, it's been destroyed, but it's also, you know, these probably have some kind of regeneration ability. Maya, you can see, you know, on the, uh, on the map here, one of the ships that you came in with is in pieces. Uh, off to the right. You'll also be able to scan and you realize that there is a Legion ship uh, up ahead uh, that was calling to you and was saying these damn these damn pirates are picking out picking off our escape pods. Uh, and if you you get a full sweep of, of, of the sensor scans, you realize that there are a series of these smaller ships that seem to be bombarding this uh, this Legion vessel. And then you also notice that there is a second Legion vessel. Uh, that has been ripped in, in two and is beginning to float apart. Uh, you're getting some mixed signals coming from them. You can't tell in what condition, but um, uh, and you're also getting radio from the control station that's attached to the feral Nephilim. Uh, and so it's like every now and then you hear this garbled message and you hear you hear like, this is engineer Sudbury. We, we are trying to get the rods reactivated. What? We are under attack. Uh, and so, Doctor T, if you didn't know this, Deacon would be able to fill you in. Feral Nephilim scientists are in charge of kind of keeping the rods in place, keeping this feral, and so like they're trying to keep this feral Nephilim. If this creature went full feral, it would be able to send this blast, this massive beacon, and it would just pull all of the feral Nephilim that float in space towards it and would create this horrific event and then you can see that there's other legion ships that are under attack so that's where we're at we're going to dive into spaceship combat now okay we got this we I'm so got excited this. okay so uh so we've got that um everyone i'm giving everyone a job to track something because there's a lot of different things melissa's going to do the hardest job because she knows how it works she's going to track attribute and shield damage for you all uh, Joe, you're gonna you're gonna track uh, calibration. So calibration is one of the actions you can take during spaceship combat to give you permanent buffs to weapons. Uh, and so you, whenever someone does it, if you get success, you could track it for your ship. Uh, my tray, I want you to track velocity. Right now, your starting velocity is two. The max velocity your ship can have is six. Can't go under one either. Uh, so right now, starting velocity is two. Chuck, you're going to track NPC usage. Right now, what I'm going to say, this is just my own little wrinkle. You have three fer you have three Nephilim NPCs with you. You can use one of them every turn. You can use a, you can use each of them once per turn to get a plus one bonus if you describe how you're using them. Is essentially how okay. it is. So just be you know flavor it. So you just track that, and then Jeremy, you're tracking munitions. Okay. So your your ship starts with three munitions. They work mm -hmm. exactly like personal combat. You don't okay. have to spend them, but if you want to spend them to get an extra D6 on your roll if to make a gunnery check or mm -hmm. to make an attack, you can if you want to. There is an cool. action called rearm so, yeah. Yeah. that reloads them. Okay? Sweet. Okay. So, we're going to start up. So, first off, the, the way this is working, there's going to be, there's essentially three steps to combat. Movement phase, which is automatic. So essentially, you move forward a number of spaces equal to your velocity score. Okay, so I'll do this for you just to show you what I mean. So facing does exist in this. So since you all are on a 45 degree angle, uh, we're going to move you two spaces forward. And so you've moved two. So that's moving phase done. Enemy ships that I have control of that you don't know everything about just yet, something is happening with them right now too. Then... After that, we go into first phase. First phase is when you, if there's anybody on the crew that wants to make command actions, this is when they take them. In terms of who goes first, uh, the, the ship with the highest velocity would go first. If it's tied, then there's a crew, you, everyone has a crew attribute and whoever's got the highest crew attribute is the tiebreaker. So in this case, something happens that you don't know about. And now we come to you. Does anybody, so the command actions you have, anyone can do this. This is not a specific roll. It's just you would roll command. That's the thing. So the three actions are maneuver, which allows you to rotate your spacecraft and change its velocity either up or down. 
Uh, there's full burn, which lets which lets you rotate 45 degrees and then move one space. And then there's direct crew. Direct crew essentially lets you take a phase two action out of out of order using your command skill with a penalty. So that's mm. that's essentially what that is. So is there anybody that wants to take an action? You do see that there are two small fighter type ships that are attacking a Legion vessel straight ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll take a command action. I'll go for maneuver. Okay. All right. So then, Dr. T, uh, you can... So maneuver is difficulty is 10 minus your engines. Uh, Melissa, do you have your sheet up? Yes, I do. Your engines is engines three? Is three. Yeah, so your difficulty is a seven. So you're rolling your command with a difficulty of a seven. Yeah, I got a 15. Okay. With fantastic. a six in there. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll let the 15 ride, but yeah. Okay. So, uh, so basically, you can, so since you're doing a maneuver, this is allowing you to increase your velocity by up to your engines. So you can essentially increase it all the way up to five if you wanted to. Uh, I'll keep. Because our current velocity, you said, is two. Is it two? Yeah. Yeah. I'll bump the velocity up to three, okay. and then I want to turn the straight north. Okay. So go ahead, Maitre, and keep track of the velocity as you are now up to three, and then I'll rotate you all. So you now you're going straight north. Okay. One thing I, I, I should tell you all is that these larger like bits of wreckage, you can absolutely fly through them. They are considered obstructions. There's like little wrinkles, like you can use them sometimes as cover, but sometimes it requires an extra test to fly through them without suffering any damage. But it's also a good way to sometimes increase your, like to hide in between the wreckage and stuff like that. Okay. Is anybody else doing a command roll? Uh, does the wreckage count as like breaking line of sight for things too? Or no. does that matter? No. No, okay. I say it's not a thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So if that's the case, then if there's nobody who wants to do a, another command, we're going to go into, I, I'm going to do something and it's done. Uh, and then <laughs> second phase. It's always so nerve wracking. It is. It's so ominous. <laughs> Second phase. So the second phase is when everyone it was when everyone takes engineer operations and gunnery actions. Okay. Now all of you get to take one action. So Dr. T has done his already, but you still have four actions at your disposal. Uh, and so in this, in the second phase, you all have, uh, you all have your choice of engineering actions, which means you're rolling an engineering check. So things you could do is damage control to heal your to heal yourself to heal like regenerate your shields or repair any kind of physical attribute damage you've taken in the last round. You can do divert power, which would essentially bring your shields down to add an extra effect to somebody else's roll, effectively doubling the effect of that um, of, of their action. Or you can do combat jump. Combat jump's not going to be applicable to us because we're in Kasuf. Kasuf doesn't have any. Uh, it doesn't have any lay dust, so it's not something we have to worry about for this. Operations, you can do things like scan, which allows you to um, put locked on onto a target, which could give bonuses to your weapons, or it could act, get you to remove locked on if you've been locked on mm. so that you're not giving bonuses. It also lets you uh, make sure next attack be a little bit more precise. And so if you were to do crit damage, you actually can control a little bit which attribute because you get a plus or minus on that mm. uh, you could do deploy which is kind of like what you were trying to do before kill was is where you release an ordinance and so in this case you mm. guys have the thermalix eggs which are warheads um, they have a small bit of movement they can move very slow but they can still move and then you could do calibrate and this is what i was telling you about joe so calibrate is when you just like you're checking your weapons you're checking your weapons and you can give yourself plus one hit and plus one shield damage to all your weapons for the remainder of combat. And it stacks up to five times. The gunnery actions, okay. the gunnery actions, really, there's just three. The only one that actually uses the gunnery, uh, act, uh, the gunnery skill itself is rearm. And that's when you want to reload your munitions. You're at full munitions, so there's really no reason to take it right just yet. Then you have two different types of attacks. There's fire, which is just your all purpose. You can fire, mm -hmm. you can, you know, you can do it with whatever. And there's careful shot. Careful shot allows you to use your sensors to in, like to essentially increase your range. Okay, so if mm -hmm. you're if, if a target's out of range, 
uh, then you can potentially do that. You can still attack stuff out of your range, but remember, just like personal combat, there is the negative mm -hmm. penalty to attacking outside your range, and, range increment. Careful shot can only be used once per turn. Fire can be used multiple times. However, each one of your weapons can only be, be fired once. Mm. So that's where we're at. Okay, so I just went through all the actions. I know that's a lot, uh, but mm -hmm. does anyone have an idea so of something an they'd I like to do? So I have an idea, um, sort of like a early combat combo option. Um, so I could do an engineering uh, action of divert power, which does six shield damage, but we just started and we've got full shields. So we've got the opportunity to gain that back. And that could do double effect of a roll. So if someone else was thinking about doing the calibrate action, then it means mm, that we would get double do. effect I was on a going calibrate. To do as well. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of chain nice. those options okay. together. Um, so, right. um, so divert I've got is a fourteen plus, minus your power. So yeah, I've got plus two engineering. If uh, uh, I'll and then throw one of our NPCs at that. Yeah, don't forget. You, so that's that's just our own little wrinkle. That's not okay. in the actual rules. If you're watching this frag people, that's just something we're doing. But if you tell me how you're using them, and you can get a plus one on your roll. Uh, but the difficulty for this test is going to first of all, it's going to be an engineering test, and the difficulty mm -hmm. is going to be eleven. Eleven. Yep. And I've got a plus two to engineering, and uh, okay, so I rolled a twelve. Um, okay. Plus two, plus one for the help. Okay. So what's the total? So 15. Okay. So that's a success. Uh, so in this case, uh, that's going to, uh, that's going to Sorry, make you reduce your... go down to 10. Exactly. Uh, and that means that whoever does another, another check, so in this case, calibrate was the plan. If you succeed on it, you're going to get plus two instead of plus one. And what, what was your total, did you say, you rolled? 15. 15. So that would be an unexpected consequence, right? Uh, yes, technically. Uh, okay, so I have a couple different ideas for these. I, I brainstorm a few. So what I'm going to say is uh, you do it so well and so efficiently, you only suffer three shield damage instead of six. Sweet. Okay. Oh, yes. So you're able to do just more efficient transfer of power. We go to Maya. Uh, Maya, were you gonna were you going to go to try to do the... Who was going to do the I, calibration? I was, but I have a plus two on my operations and the tech is a plus one, so I'd rather pass the bonus that you just did to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was planning on doing calibrate as well, but I, I can do something else if you want to. No, man, I, it stacks up to five times, so might as well. Yeah, okay. so, you can only, so, you so can the only get the benefit benefit of it once per turn. So like you can't both both of you cannot successfully get the benefit of of a calibrate on the same turn. So if the I first see. person succeeds, the second person there's no point in them doing it. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay, and because um, what my benefit is that it it's as if it were activated twice, so it's not a benefit to the role; it's just a benefit to the outcome. I see. All right, okay. thank you. But like um, you could still maybe do lock on or something like that. Yeah, I was I was thinking if uh, you want to do calibrate to check them, maybe I can do a careful shot. Okay. Uh, yeah, gun I'll do that. Gunnery is the other thing I have a plus in. Gunnery you don't use to make attacks though. Your weapons have a have the plus bonus. That's, we'll cover that when we get to I, it. Though. I think that that I should still be able to do careful shot, no? You can, but we'll talk. We'll talk about the attack in a second about whether it's a, it's a good idea or not. Because well, because there's some there's, there's some complication factors there. So Zatek, okay. why don't we just start? Why don't we just start with the calibrate? So go ahead. You need to roll your fourteen minus sensors. Sensors are four, so the goal is ten. Okay. So yeah, okay. difficulty is ten. Thirteen. Okay, so that'll be a success. This means, and you, since you're in control of tracking this, that means you, your, all of your weapons now have a plus two to hit, and a plus two to their shield damage. So shield damage is just Sweet. like endurance. So we do endurance and personal combat. Shield damage is the same thing for, for space combat. Okay. Okay. So then, Maya, if you're thinking of taking careful shot, so you have a couple weapons. So you have two weapons on your ship, and so the two weapons you have, you have turrets. 
uh, and you have uh, you have mines. So you have your Thermalix eggs, which are mines, and then you have a phase beam grid. Now the phase beam grid only has a range of one, uh, but you can, with careful shot, uh, what that'll do is it'll let you add your sensors to it. Uh, so which means that your sensors are, where are they? Are four. So it would give you five range. And so, and so by that number, it's, it's literally just like squares. So it's Great. one, two, and there's no difference between diagonal and orthogonal. So one, two, three, four, five. So you would be one outside your range increment on this attack. It just means a minus two penalty. You can still do it. I'm just, there's just a minus yeah, two penalty yeah. to firing outside your range. And if you want to use munitions, I could use my gun reaction to try and reload. Yeah, You've okay, got... then let me try and do that. Okay. One you of can... the nerdy NPCs will help my, uh, line so, that up. Okay. So, um, the nerdy NPCs, uh, one of the two of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So the emissary who has been uh, vo who was vomiting black goo out of all the orifices until the tech shut down the the signal mm -hmm. uh, leans over your shoulder, dripping the, the the that black goo, and her voice remember is very <laughs> high pitched and weird, and she's like, "Are you sure you want to attack that this one, this one right here, right now? Do you want to?" And just completely backseat driving you as you try to take the shot. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay, so just to walk us through this attack, then uh, you're going to be rolling three, 36 is normal, but then you're taking a, yeah. you're using one, one munitions munition. to yeah. get to 46. Yeah. Even though you just got the benefit of plus two from calibrate because you're shooting outside your range increments, you get a minus two. So that that's in the wash. So you're basically rolling four D six to hit one of the two little uh, little plane thingies out there. Okay. Do I uh, reroll sixes on this? Like it's just like get... it's just like personal combat. You can spend okay. your sixes to do critical effects or strong hits, I should say. And so, you, if you you can use it as an effort to reroll, if you want to try to get a higher number, you can use it to create critical hits to do attribute damage to these things too. Okay. Critical hits. Uh, for what's worth, if I do the rearm thing, that reloads all our munitions. Can I use two munitions then? I can't remember if you can take more than one munition at a single I, time. That's a good question. I think you can. On, on regular guns, you can, but space combat yeah. might be different. Yeah. I don't that's think there's a difference. Thing. Let me double check. Let's see if I have anything here. I don't see anything in my notes, so yeah. Okay, so yeah. I'm Since I don't see any minutes, do it. Munitions. Hell yes. Okay. Uh, so twenty-two with two sixes. Yes. Okay. Twenty-two. So, 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 so you rolled five dice. Twenty-two total. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with two sixes, that's a hit. Yeah. Okay. So then with one of those sixes, you can spend that to do a, a critical hit. And then with the other six, you can use critical boost, which would increase your crit damage by plus one. Uh, so, yes, please. I would very much like to do that. <laughs> and and the damage is upped by two from calibrate, right? Sh or shield it... damages, right? Yeah, shield damages, Ooh. but not crit damage. So right I'm now guessing. your shot uh, is dealing is going to be doing five crit damage, and it's going to be doing. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, we got to cycle it back. I'm sorry. Um, I think you're still fine though, because careful shot with your specific gun, because you guys have a weird like special trait that doesn't increase the range. It just gives you extra shield damage. But I still think you would hit with a 22 because you rolled it. You rolled so high. Um, mm. So. The difficulty would have actually been a little bit higher. It would have been. Hang on, let me do the math. So let's see which one's closer. One, math, two, math, three, math. five, six. six it's one. Okay, so no, you actually wouldn't hit because um, the difficulty because your your range, the range of your turret is is one. 
And so every increment outside of your, every range increment outside of what your range on your weapon is, is a minus two penalty. And so you basically get two, four, six, eight, ten. Let's see, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so you have a minus ten penalty on the shot for careful shot. Oh, which, okay. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. I forgot that your oh, turret has that special okay. little thing. Sorry. First time doing any of this. Yeah. Um, did you want? Yeah, did, yeah. Knowing that, did you want to spend the other munition to get another D six? Oh. Uh, I can get them all back for you. If in you theory. can get it all back for you, and the highest I can get is a six, does it? Does it make a difference? If you roll another D six and you roll, you could potentially hit. Yeah. Right now, right now you're missing at twenty two, but okay. you, you're an extra D six if you roll decent on it, you could actually hit. Okay. 27. 27 is going to be five. a hit. Yes. Okay. So yes. that's going to be a hit. Not high enough to be like an unexpected consequence. Uh, but you did get, you did said you got those two sixes. So we can still do the crit damage. All that's still going to go through. So one for, for these boost and one for crit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these guys do have a little bit of armor, but not enough. And so you see that the one in the, we'll say, uh, just to the left of the the Legion ship, you take a, f your your turret starts to, bzzz, you hear, everyone hears it charging up inside the ship. And then anybody on the bridge, you just watch the beam just fly out across the sky or across this, across space. And you see this, this little tiny fighter that was attacking uh, explodes and you just see that whoosh. And then it completely suppresses the fire because that's how it's supposed to work. Okay. Uh, so, as success, kill. What would you like to do? Well done. Yeah, you can see that was amazing. I'm so proud of you. Look at that. <laughs> I can't believe you made that shot. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I know you can make that shot. Let me get you set up for the next one. Okay. And I'll, I'll do the gunnery action to reload munitions. Okay. And so it's just a gunnery check. We'll help them out. Okay, so Saskatoon is like, I can help you. He just screams in your ear. <laughs> um, okay, so go ahead. It says 12 minus your crew. You have a 2 in crew, which means your difficulty is 10. So it's a gunnery okay. uh, gunnery test, and you get a plus 1 from Saskatoon. Okay, cool. Got a 13. Nothing okay. special. It makes it. Okay. Uh, and so now you will reload have our all munitions. Of, all of your munitions will be back for next round. Okay, my turn. Uh, so you all watch as, so I'm gonna take a couple actions now in terms of how this works. I basically have the same amount of actions as the amount of PCs in the game, uh, in, in the fight. So I get my five actions as well. And at the start of the second phase, anybody who has ordinances. So in your cases, if you have any deployed mines, in my cases, if I any, if I have any deployed fighters move at the start of the second phase. And it, they don't correspond to facing, only like the big ships, like um, like your ship, you care about facing. So, uh, you're gonna see suddenly popping up on your sensors, additional pings. And yeah. you see this, you, you blow up one fighter that's attacking this Legion ship. The other fighter that was is now going to turn and is going to move in your direction. So this is the start of phase two. Uh, so this is gonna be one, two, so wait, one, two, three. So they're gonna move there. And then you're gonna see two more small blips start flying in your direction as well. And then I'm going to take my actions. So I'm going to take a calibrate action. All right. And that'll be a success. And then I will take a, what else am I going to do? I'm going to take a scan test. And so this little fighter who comes flying over to you after you've killed its wingman, after you, if you killed Hollywood, uh, you can see here comes Maverick. He's going to come over and he's going to attempt us. So we're going to attempt to scan basically. Um, oh no, they're going to lock onto us. So this is 12 minus my sensors. All right. 10, 13, 15. Okay. So you guys are now locked on as you, you hear Zateus, uh, is going to, uh, 
say out to you, like, you know, like, warning, warning, they have scanned us and found our vulnerabilities. Uh, so I'm going to say that they've scanned you, and so you are locked on. Uh, doing, I basically did, like, no first phase actions, so I'm just doing all second phase. Then I'm going to do a careful shot uh, with suddenly appearing on your radar coming around from behind one of these feral nephilim you see a much larger ship uh, begin to appear you would assume possibly the ship that is like feeding these uh, uh, feeding these these little fighters that have popped out so they start kind of curving around from behind this nephilim that ha that this nephilim ship that uh, that might have been clogging up your initial your initial sensor readings uh, and I'm going to attempt a careful shot with them. And you hear, uh, like, incoming fire. And this railgun, like a Battlestar Galactica railgun, just... And you just see these 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 gigantic uh, bullet casings begin flying uh, from beyond the... Uh, from beyond the feral ship. And they kind of come off in your direction. Uh, I'm going to be at penalty to some degree, I think. So... This is going to be, so I've got to do careful, so I'm doing a careful shot so I can now fire from, yeah, I can fire from ways. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'm going to get, I'm going to get a penalty on my attack, but I'm still going to attack. Uh, and I'm going to use a munition. And because you are locked on, uh, I also get a small little bonus to that as well but we'll see if it makes sense. Okay. So that's going to be a total of 12, 15, uh, uh, 19 minus the two for the range. So 17 to hit. So okay, Melissa, our, what's our, your defense? Our defense is 13. Okay. So this rail gun just opens up from this larger pirate vessel that was curving around from behind one of these Nephilims and just unloads a broadside of its railgun at this new target that's come through the gate. Uh, it is going to do, first of all, um, uh, five points of shield damage. Uh, so okay, we have you can three armor. And so you start seeing... Well, I haven't done armor yet. Armor oh, okay. for... Yeah, so that's just shield. And then you hear like Zateus kind of freaking on, freaking out. And then you're gonna take. I'm not. I don't know why I'm rolling that. Uh, I just, I'm spending a six to do a crit. You take five critical damage. <gasps> okay, so armor is three. So then that's two critical damage. And so as the railgun comes flying over, it, it your shields slow down many of those rounds, but a few penetrate. And then you and those of you in different places on the on the the starboard side of the ship. I always forget. Uh, you you kind of f hear the impact, and you start seeing some of these rail like these rail shots go through your hull, thum, thum, thum. Uh, and you're going to take some random damage. So just like personal combat and uh, in spaceship combat, like it's random what attribute it goes to. So you guys get hit to power. Okay, so power goes from three down to one. Mm hmm Okay. And that's the end of my okay. turn. Okay. All right. So did you that's do the all first five round. of your turns? Yeah, I did some I did some other stuff. Oh. Well oh, I had to deploy <laughs> I had to deploy I had to deploy new fighters and then I then I you know and stuff like that. So okay. So that's the end of that round. Uh, and we go to a new round. And so what we do now at the start of the new round is we move forward our main ships. A number of spaces equal to our velocity. You guys are going three. So you would move uh, you would move three spaces. Yeah. Do we have to roll to like reposition like re-angle? That That's what the so command that would be in the first command turn. Phase is. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Maneuver so this is and what Chuck did last time. Yeah. Yeah. So last time uh, we you. increased to three. I also have three speed, so I'm going to move one, two, three. So as it now starts flying through and past uh, some of this this gas from 
uh, the different battles that have occurred here. Uh, okay, so you all get to go first. So uh, you have a higher score than me, so... Um, what do you all think? Do we do maneuver 45 degrees so we're going away from it? Or do we turn towards the right and try and behind, hide behind that Nephilim sh- or who's your what's it? Legion ship. Yeah, I, I like that. The, yeah, I like the like second cover. the ladder. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll do a maneuver. I'll turn 45 degrees to the right. Okay. Uh, maneuver is pretty simple. So command test, uh, you would need to hit a 10 minus your engines. Your engines are three, I believe. So yeah. do you need to do 45 degrees or 90? Has to be 45. It's 45. There are certain things that you can take at certain points that can increase that rotation. But for you all, it's 45. Got it. Thank That's you. That's the fault. Mm-hmm. Got a 14. With okay. a six? Four- 14 when the difficulty was a seven. So what we'll say is that, uh, so I do have, I did kind of brainstorm some potential unexpected consequences. So for maneuver, I would say you can do, you can do an extra. So one of the things you can get, if you wanted to do an extra 45 degrees, you can go ahead and take that as your unexpected consequence. That's one option. Or I would say because you're moving so uh, elusively, you can take plus one defense for the rest of this turn. I like defense. Okay. What do you all think? That works. Sure. Yep. Uh, okay. And if so, we bump our go go up to four next round, that would put us like way up there. So the did you rotate? Bump the go So maneuver still gets through. So what do you want to do? You want to rotate to the right or to the left? That gotcha. Way. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we're rotating a little bit towards your starboard side, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. Anybody else taking a command phase action? I don't think so. Okay. Nope. Um, I will then take a command phase action. I will. Um, I'm going to full burn. So what full burn lets me do is it lets me rotate and move forward one space in either order I want, assuming I'm successful in my check. So I'm going to give that a try now. Uh, That will be success. Uh, So I'm going to move forward on my big guy one space, and then I'm going to rotate 45 degrees to go like basically directly uh, to, uh, to my left, essentially to my port. Okay, uh, and that's the end of my first phase. I don't want to do anything else, so I'm going to keep keep them all the rest. So second phase, and so we should. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but but the phases uh, what determines what you go first in. So second phase, you it's the highest current CPU, and the tiebreaker is crew. Uh, you guys have a have you guys are good. So you guys have a higher CPU than me, so you guys get to yep. go first. So go right ahead. So I'm gonna jump in um just so a little bit of a rule thing so we took attribute damage last mm-hmm. turn to our mm-hmm. power and so basically you have to repair it either yeah. during the turn that it happens yep. or the next one or that just is what it is so uh, i can I jump in with the, do. uh damage can we... con- or i or somebody can do damage control okay. can you do more than one damage control can like one person repair if attribute it's... and the other person do shield or can no. all be just they, you, they you get all happen, of it though yeah, you get re- oh. regen and yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. for yeah. every action. All of the stuff happens. Oh, okay. For, I see. That's yeah. So every action you can only receive the ben- the successful benefit of it once per turn. So mm-hmm. so that's why only. I mean, yeah. so multiple people can do it, but like if the first person succeeds, there's no point in having the second person do it. I wanted to do damage control or calibrate. I was okay. not good with either of those. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'll do damage control then. Um, it's 12 minus crew. What's our crew? So you, guys should be able, you guys should be able to double click on your on the post chat and see your stats if you wanted to do it fast. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to re-roll at a one. Because you got a six. Another one, so 13. 
Okay, 13 is still a success. Uh, so you should be able to restore your region. You guys have very high regen for shields. I think you have like seven. Yeah, uh, we do. So you can oh, nice. restore. So shields are up to 14 out of 16. Mm -hmm. So almost back to and full. And so the improvement, I believe, on damage control is one. Mm -hmm. Just so, one. Uh, what that means is that our power is going to be permanently reduced to two. Mm. Well, the for most the we duration of the is... combat. Yeah. Like, we can well, fix yeah. it back up after we're out Later. of danger, exactly. but we can only get it so good right now. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, that's that. So, three more to go. So, we got. So, that was the tech, and Dr. T is gone. So, Jita, Maya, or Kill? Um. What do you think of Jita? Are you wanting to do damage control and I keep doing gunnery to give Maya uh, more munitions or? Did you mean calibrate? Because the tech took care of uh, damage control. Oh, I apologize. I had it flip flopped in my head. Uh, yeah, I can keep doing calibrate. Um, I, I think we should probably deploy so that we've got two different things that we're trying to attack with at once. Um, did you say deploy? Um, I'm sorry. I think that's probably one of the things we should do is deploy. Right. Mm. So your second weapon, the eggs, is an ordnance weapon. So it has to be deployed first. Once deployed, uh, mm. then that it, can move you around. can attack with it. So, uh, Big Meat Friends, he is excited for the thought of deployment. I can okay. help birth this baby with you. Wow. I mean, it's, a, <laughs> it's an egg. So that's I am an expert in this. Okay, so uh, this is operations. This is operations. Yeah, to deploy. Okay. The miracle of life. Difficulty um, of ten. So, okay. Saskatoon's giving so, you plus one. Somebody I, else can calibrate if, if wanted. Yeah, I can. I can do either or because I have a yeah. uh, operations is my best thing. So. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm only gonna have a minus one to the deploy um, mm. because of the help from our Nephilim friends. All right, so I, I got a six, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, so 13. 13 is and a success, not a unexpected consequence, but you will in fact deploy. So okay. let me go ahead and show you the little baby I have for you, actually. Actually, have a little Exciting. thing. So with yours, your you poop yours out the back because it has a rear la <laughs> launch angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So you you just pooped <laughs> a baby out your out the back. And so there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, now, once you, I think once you get once you launch it, which you've now launched, uh, you can mm -hmm. immediately move with it. Uh, so it can like so so but your the mines are fairly small and slow so they can only move one but if you wanted to start having them fly because they are they do yeah. move they're not stationary yeah so i would say it, it goes out the back which is um to the kind that's of where it starts southwest ish and then move it one to the starboard side so that it's like right uh beneath us yeah okay all done okay is that fair enough captain is that acceptable captain that Doctor? perfect Okay, deploy is done. Uh, Maya and Kill are left. Mm -hmm. uh, I can uh, calibrate this time around. Uh, Kill, if you want to re up the oceans, and I can just shoot next one. Yeah, I mean, okay. I could just shoot too, since we have four or that, right now. Or that. Yeah, yeah. So why you, yeah. well, you should uh, I'll calibrate do calibrate theory. first. Yeah, so yeah. calibrate will be operations test 14 minus your sensors. You guys do have good sensors, uh, so it'd be a 10. You need a 10, uh, Maya. And Ottawa will cough some gunk at you and uh, advise 18. you. Sorry? Okay. Or, sorry, what's that? You got a plus one. You get a bonus. Oh, uh, 18 is what I got, so 19. <laughs> I appreciate the flavor, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, so what we'll do for, um, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and say for calibrate since you've got you you 
far exceeded with unexpected consequences. I'll give you another plus two instead. So we'll say you guys, so Joe, yes. you guys are up to plus four to hit and plus four shield damage from unexpected consequences. Mm -hmm. no, we're almost maxed. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. You're going to need it. <laughs> so, uh, so then that means <laughs> kill. That's not Good. ominous. It is your turn. <laughs> All right. I want to take out. I'm, I like. I love taking out little guys that are close by because I know we're oh, gonna yes. be trying to take cover. That's real nice. That's real nice, Jeremy. That you're taking them out, like on the on the town, like for yeah. a nice dinner. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you <laughs> and me. Yeah. He really yeah. likes the little guys. Okay. Uh, so you want to go for the this this? Uh, okay. I'll go for the near get nearby one, and so okay. I'm assuming if I do careful shot, it's not changing my chance to hit, but it's um. Uh, careful shot will not change your chance to hit, but it will increase your shield damage. damage. Yes. Okay, so, I'll go with that. In, in this case, you're going to have a minus four penalty from range increment. Okay, so based but on you rolling get a plus flat. plus four to hit Basically because of our calibrates. Okay. And you can take munitions. Spend... Your munitions are full, so you can take them. Okay, I'll, I'll spend... I'll spend one munition and save two for Maya for our next shot. Okay, so 46, I believe, you're rolling. Ooh, I like that. Let me re-roll that too. And whoa, 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 wait. Before you re-roll, before you re-roll, remember that sixes in combat, if you want them to, you can, you oh, can still use right. effort, okay. but it's for, that's how you get critical damage. So it's up to you. Okay. So if I keep it with what I had, I would have had 18 with two sixes. That is a hit. Did you so roll 3d6 or 4d6? I rolled 4. I and used the munition. And that's including okay. the plus, oh, that's right. plus 4 from Yeah, the plus 4 and the minus 4 washed each other out. That is an okay. absolute hit. So don't waste those 6s on effort. Spend I'll 1 to crit damage. Crit and then boost crit. And that is enough to kill a second one. So, like, that combo nice. is enough to kill the second. So you take out <laughs> this this second fighter who's, who closed in on you. Okay. Fantastic, guys. This is way better than Melissa did yesterday when we were practicing. <laughs> <laughs> was so much better. Mopping the floor with that. Was I was like, maybe I should tone this encounter down. So now I'm just going to bring the other ship up. I was okay. I was oh, not God. a good steward of the posh chat. One v one. We were learning. We were learning. Okay. Uh, as the end of your guys' round, my turn. First thing I do, because I have ordinances out, I get to move them. And so they're going to, mm. so I have two fighters. And so they're both going to move in your direction. Uh, they have a movement of four. So one, two, three, four, three. Okay. So I'm going to, one's going to come on closer there. And then the other one's going to come up closer there. Again, with ordinances, they don't, you don't worry about facing. Like, I'm just moving the facing just to mm -hmm. make it look, you know, legit for people looking at the map. But, like, so your, your mind, when you go to move your mind, don't worry about which way it's facing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the start. I have four actions to go because I did a full burn on my command phase. So I have four actions. Okay. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate uh, to see if I can boof up my thingamajiggy. Oh my God, that's such a good roll. Why can't I do that? <laughs> oh no. For, I should, well, it's only on calibrate. It could have been worse. It oh, could have been yeah. on attack. I just rolled two sixes, so I was very excited. Okay, so my calibrate is successful. Uh, and so you hear like Zateas, they are charging up weapons again. Um, then... Then I'm going to see what else I can do. I am going to careful shot with my railgun again. So that's going to fire directly at you guys. So this has got a range of, let me see where my range is. Range of six plus its sensors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You are exactly nine spaces away, so you're in my range. Because I'm taking careful shot, I get the bonus of the range, so no penalty there. Yikes. Um, okay, I won't use a munitions. I have limited munitions, just so you guys know. Um, I, I'm not like you guys, so, so I'm going to roll. All right, I did get one six. Uh, it's going to be a total of... 19 to hit with one six. 
Okay. Yeah. So defense is thirteen. So it's gonna hit. Um, your defense <laughs> is thirteen. So that's a that's an unexpected consequence. Is that your, that you're telling me? Uh huh. Uh y- yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's that's what I meant to for say. For careful shot. <laughs> For careful shot, <laughs> I either do more shield damage or more critical damage. I'm just going to do careful shot. Um, I'm going to do shield damage. So you're going to take a total of two plus five plus. You're going to take nine points of shield damage. Eek. Put this down to five. And Gosh. then I'm going to spend my one six that I got um, to do to do critical damage to you. And because you guys are still locked on, my lock-on benefit that I get for this weapon is plus one crit damage. So you guys take oh, five critical damage. Oh, we didn't clear the locked on. Bah. Minus your armor, so you take two more points of attribute damage. All right, so where am I putting it? Random to your engines. Oh, no. That's okay. going to slow us down. So engines go from three down to one. And I still have another turn. Uh... The fighters, I still have another action. The fighters are going okay. to attack. Uh, the good news is uh, they're not close enough to you to get some, the bonuses that they have. So they're just going to randomly fire at you and see if I get lucky. One, two, three. Yeah, this is a low chance to hit, but I'll try. Um, so it's going to be minus two. There goes my calibrate. Okay, so I don't get it. I basically don't get any calibrate bonus. 9, 11, 12. 12 to hit. So that is a miss. So the fires, you nope. the the fires, the fighters start sh- shooting out these uh, these individually manned fighters and uh, those shots do miss and that is the end of my turn. Uh, new round. Uh, I think we both increased our speeds to 3 last time. So I think I our velocities up. are both at 3. Is that right? We went up to 4. 4. Or you went to four. Okay, so go ahead and move yourselves four. Or I can do it if you want me to. I got it. So you should. Oh no, I moved both. I got you. Go I got the little baby. <laughs> Get out of just... here, baby. Where was he? Was he Trail there? the egg with. Uh, no, he was uh, there. I think he was there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then I move forward three. So I'm going to move one, two, three. Okay. All right. So, uh, so just to remind you guys, if you go into any of the spaces that have the ship, you can, you, it's two things basically happen, uh, because it is a physical obstruction. You would have to make a command test to safely move through it and to not smash into the damn thing. Uh, just a difficulty 12, pretty standard stuff. Um, but then you would also get to essentially add your engines, your current engine score to your defense. So it's a way of giving yourselves cover, basically. And it also slows you down. So, all right. You guys have higher velocity. So you guys go first. What do you think, Chuck? If we turn 45 degrees going straight east and then keep our velocity or keep our speed up at four we drop another mine here take some shots and make them have to turn around because they won't be able to turn as quick right what do you think makes sense. sounds like science to me, to me. we're yeah. gonna go science i'm gonna do a maneuver so we can start going that direction okay with our velocity okay. four so i think I think it's a target uh, target number of seven for your command it's test for that. Nine, because our engines got hurt. <gasps> oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. We oh, believe oh. in you, though. I got a nine. That's exactly a nine. <laughs> you guys forget. I'm gonna risk it. Chuck and fragged. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're good. Do you want to increase or decrease your velocity? Uh, I would like to keep it at four. Okay. So, you, so I think because I think it does say May, so I don't think you have to do it. I think it does say okay. May. Okay. Uh, all right. So that is that is one. Does anybody else want to do any command actions? Okay. Do we are no. we good with a forty five degree? Do we want to turn any so tighter? I'm not saying that you should do this. I'm just throwing this out there just to walk walk us through it. If you were trying to get into the ship into the ships and try to increase your defenses. 
someone could take a command action right now to do full burn, which full would burn. allow you to change your face and move forward one space. And so if you change your face to a 45 degree angle and then move one, you would effectively be in one of the squares that has the ship. I'm not would saying that, you should. I have no idea if that's the right thing to do. It's just can work that, if you wanted it to. Mess Would that put any penalty on our ability to shoot out no. of the ship? No, there's not really a line of sight thing. This is just sort of you because because every turn is mm. like five minutes of you flying around and stuff. So like we're not oh, you know, we don't we would know. have different weapons, though. I would imagine because it's a legion ship. Well, well legion so ship is, it... is disabled, so it's like yeah. this thing's disabled. This thing like what they had said right. was there is like they were sh uh, they were kind of disabled by these feral nephilims and these fighters were shooting some of their escape pods and things like that. OK. Okay. So being in a physical obstruction, we, we have to do a command roll to move through. We can add our current engines to their defense score and then reduce this current velocity by one. Or we can go around it. I go think we should. Captain Dr. T, your call. I don't think Let's go around it because that one defense bonus, I don't think is worth it when we got people needing okay. to fix it. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't feel like there's any real benefit. To, yeah, I think we should just go around it. Okay, so I have, that's the end of your uh, first phase. Go ahead, Zatek. I have a weird thing. Are these the only actions we can take, or can we do, like, other... Uh, I wanted to see if I could help the other ship get back online, the Legion ship. If I could, you like... You need to be on the ship to do that. Okay, I can't, like, yeah. communicate with them or, like, walk them through or anything, like... No, or, not really. comms. No, like, okay. like they're on a timer. I have them on a timer. So like mm -hmm. for the for the purpose okay. of the combat, they're not they're not really an, an objective for you. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So that's the end of the command uh, end of the first phase. Mm -hmm. You've done your command. I'll do I'm gonna do my command. I am gonna again do a full burn uh with my ship to try to keep keep tight on you guys. Um Minus my engines, 14 minus two, so 12, 12 is a success. So that's going to, so I'm going to essentially move one. So I'm gonna rotate one, excuse me. So I'm gonna rotate 45 degrees towards the Legion ship a bit, and then I'm gonna move forward one. So I'm ass essentially, I'm keeping you within my, my railgun range. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's the end of my first phase your second phase so you haven't suffered any damage to your cpu is that correct correct okay so second phase it's the cpu highest goes first so you guys actually go first still okay so um, what did we take damage last time engines engines okay and because it's yeah, the beginning on... of the second phase we can move our ordinance uh mm -hmm. one in whatever direction you guys want to move it in So you don't want to move it? Yeah, I'm probably right here. Okay. Sounds good. Oh. I got it. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I'm space. Guys are, cut the umbilical. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. So is the tech you said you're gonna do uh, damage control? Yep. That's what right. fixed. Slapping fires. Engine. All right, um, man. Winnie will help you on that. Okay. What do you mean? I was being very useful. Maya was was benefiting from. Well, okay, I'll go down there. Fine. No, um, Adi's <laughs> Adi's still coughing blood over Maya's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, twelve minus your crew, so your crew is two. So it's a difficulty of ten. It's a tech plus one from Winnie. Okay, uh, I got a fourteen, uh, fifteen then plus one. Um, okay. All right. So for damage control, some unexpected consequences, you can heal two points for the attribute instead of one, or you can regen an additional plus three shields. I'm going to do both of those because I have that ability where I get double. Oh, that's right. Because you get double Ooh, unexpected that's consequences. Nice. That's a great, great use of it. Okay. So heal two, engi so two, engines two your engines. Back full. Three of three. And then heal your your regen, I think, is seven by default. Yes. With the bonus, it'd be up to ten. So you get ten shields back. 
We're back to 15 of 16. Well I just done, hope I don't man. fail a roll because I will really screw a shit up. Oh, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> that's a problem for later. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah, it's so fine. good. Though. It's not even really your ship anyway. Just yeah. the repo people yeah. will come take it. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, Jita, Maya, kill ideas. Uh, do we want to? What is getting rid of the lock on from? Is that an operations Scan. thing? Scan yeah, test. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Scan I'm and no deploy. Good at that. Are both. You know, I'll I'll get rid of that and then kill you from fire, maybe. Uh Adi will you know, cough some blood at you to help with that <laughs> anti scan scan. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind taking hit? the last of the helpers for the deploy because I've got a minus two to operations. Okay. No, so so my the difficulty is he's helping you with that. Ten or five. Difficulty of eight. You have a four in sensors, so your difficulty four, would be eight you. to scan. Okay, <laughs> That's the next that guy is a ten. 10 is still a success. Uh, so not you don't get any bonuses from it, but you do get the success since so you can drop your lock on. I'll go ahead and remove that little targeting thing. So yeah. nice. wrong thing. Wait a second. Did I put the wrong thing on? I did put the wrong thing on. All right, there you go. All right, you're no longer locked on. So uh, all right. Uh, so then Jita and Killer left. Um, I can go and do my shot. I guess they're kind of separate. You're trying to deploy another egg, basically? Yeah, so I'm just going to poop an egg at the back. Okay. I defer to the pooping. Of course. <laughs> we're pooping Takes before we're shooting? All right. He likes to take yeah. little guys out, and he likes to defer to the pooping. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like how you let your breath out before you fire a shot, you know? <laughs> so ten. Sassy is helping uh, Jita. So I am doing a deploy action Seriously. with a difficulty Go of to your ten. home! Don't you want to go <laughs> to your home? He says to it as you go through the launch process. Uh, 5, 10, 13, 14, and I needed to get a 10. Okay, so, that's a success. Uh, nice. So let's go ahead and make him With visible. A okay. okay. Unexpected consequence because it was fourteen uh, over ten. So you can. So your deployed ordinance I have can get plus one to its immediate movement. So you know how you get your basic movement. Mm. So if you wanted to move him two spaces instead of one, his boot because you guys are like your ordinances are they have boosters on them. That's why they can move. Um, but I'll say for this particular case, it was so inspired by Saskatoon's speech uh, that it's going to want You're to home. go home. So if you want to move it twice, it can. Captain, Captain Dr. T, which direction? Uh, down one, north, <laughs> south, ah. southeast, one. <laughs> it keeps moving everything at once. <laughs> okay. Okay, hang on. I'll, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to oh. fix it. I'm oh, going to no. oh. fix it. So down one, and then you wanted... There, that's what I thought. Okay. Yep. Okay. Excellent. So I, kill. I love these cardinal directions mm. in space. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. two degree. It's a two dimensional surface that we're looking at. Okay. So that, yeah. Uh, I know. So kill. Uh, if you want to fire, one thing I'm going to draw your attention to. So mm -hmm. to give you an extra option is you haven't done your careful shot and everything and all that kind of stuff. So you have your Thermalix egg. Your thermal Thermalix egg has a range of one, uh, mm -hmm. but and has a max range of two. So if you did your careful shot with the egg, if you controlled it from whatever little panels that you guys have back there that's kind of feeding information, you actually, if you wanted to, you could attack with the egg. That's now, fun. The egg does explode because it is a mine and is a warhead. So it's gone once once it attacks. It, it, it shoots, uh -huh. explodes, uh -huh. and then boom, it's done. Does it yeah. explode do it, in do a it. circle? That sounds amazing. Like, it's not like oh, AOE right. damage or anything. It just, it just blows up. Okay. Blood over, blood over. Do you want to do it? I, I'm no, torn. Like, how, what kind of penalty would I have to shoot at the main ship? Uh, if I didn't care. For so you couldn't get there with a Thermalix. The Thermalix has a max range Not of with the two. Thermalix, but the regular gun. Okay, so if you... Because the egg's already kind of in a good position to intercept the fighter. 
is okay. my thought process. Like two, three. Okay, so you're four away. So one, two, three. I mean, you're four outside your range instrument. So you would have a minus eight on your Oof. shot. You have two munitions that you two. That's true. Really, they've been shooting. I just want to shoot them back. We've got our egg like in a good intercept position already. I admit, I want to use two munition and try and shoot the big guy. Oh, yeah. Don't do it, man. So I'd have a minus eight plus four, so I'm still at a minus four. Okay. But put our last two munitions into it. I'm not saying okay, it's Okay, don't forget, did you, did you uh, take into account the calibrate bonus? Yep, we got a plus four yes. calibrate. Okay. So it would be minus eight, takes it to a minus four instead, thanks to calibrate. I'll do careful shot. With your two D6s. Because uh, okay. you're spending your munitions, right? Yeah. Okay, so right. you're rolling five D6s. Five D6s. Yes. I'm going to grit that. Oh, okay, <laughs> bad roll. Okay. <laughs> okay. I saw that face. <laughs> yeah. Two ones and three twos. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Such... You fire the first shot, clips the Legion ship. <laughs> and, uh, Ooh, Which side okay, are I like you this on, a lot better. boss Chad? <laughs> crackle, crackle. Okay, so that'd be 10, 20, 24. 24 is a hit. Yes, wow. 24 with one oh, yes. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay, so uh, with that one six, we, you still do a crit. Okay, so uh, let's get your... Let's start with shield damage. So you're using... You're using the, the turret, the turret, and because you did careful shot, you're gonna get bonuses to your shields, uh, to your shield damage. So it's one plus sensors, which is five, plus your CPU, which is three. So you're dealing eight shield damage, and then four from plus the... plus four from the calibrate. So a total of twelve shield damage. Wow! Uh, you fire this turret through, and uh, like all of you just hear the zoom, 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 and it fires out and like Sateus comes in a palpable hit Mr. Kill um, <laughs> and then critical damage you have your six so you can just do base crit damage okay. Four. okay which is four I do have armor uh, so it will do one point of attribute damage to it so I'm going to roll it randomly and it hits my power. So my power goes down by one. Okay. You have nice. very much, you have very much attack. You very much hit the main ship. Okay. Yay! And that's the end of your eyes round, second phase. Okay. My turn. All right. Start of the second phase. I can move my ordinance. Um, so one, two, three. Uh, and then I'm going to go four right behind you it's gonna fly around it there's no reason it wouldn't uh so mm -hmm. one two three four and this is gonna move right next to it all right so they are closing in on you these fighters one of them is right on your tail uh and is trying to stay on target the other one is right alongside one of your eggs uh but two of them are closing in on you then um i could do my four actions so I'm going to do, I'm going to start with Calibrate. So, 9, 10, 12, that's it. Yeah, so that's a success. So my Calibrate goes through again. All right, then I am going to spend an action to scan to try to put the Locked On back on you. And so you hear, like, Sateas, like, they're trying to look onto us again. Um, uh, that's terrible. I will burn a grit to reroll that. That's <laughs> six. Okay. That's way better. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to lock on. So it's going to relock on you with one of its other actions. So let me go ahead and get that little targeting thing on there. So you are locked on once more. They have us again. Uh, so that's, I have two more actions left. So I'm going to, I'm gonna attack you with the railgun. 
so once more, it's spooling up. Uh, it's going to be so no longer out. I'm, I'm still within my range, so it's good. So that's five, seven, eight, uh, ten. Sorry, seven, eight plus five is 13. 13 to hit is 13. Yeah, your defense? That's exactly it. Right yep. on it. Oh, yep. yeah, it was close. Um, no sixes though, so there won't be any crit damage from this. So it's just going to be straight shield damage. So just uh, just seven shield damage. Because I have calibrated okay. successfully three times. Okay. Down to eight. And then with its last action, the the fighters are going to attack you. So the fighters have a focus fire ability, which means once m multiple fighters get close, they and they start they get basically bonuses. And so they finally got multiple close, so they're going to get some bonuses to try to attack. Uh, and so they're going to try to do that now. So the fighter behind you is going to try to take out your 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 engines, and the one on your on your starboard side is going to try to take out maybe some of your sensors or something like that. As it's going to. All right, so it's three six. All right, so I have a plus six on this. Uh, seven nine. It's so a fifteen to hit. No sixes though. Uh, actually, wait, I have a five, and because you guys are locked on, I have strong hit oh, five to five six, counts. so five actually counts. So yeah. you're going to take five points of shield damage. Uh oh down to three. And you're uh. going to take four crit damage. So down to one because of armor. And so I will roll randomly to your sensors. So you lose one in your sensors. All right, sensors go from four down to three. So I'll have to keep that in mind for next time. Okay. And that's the end of my turn. And we go to the start of the round again. We do our movements. What's your velocity at? Uh, we four. kept it at four. All right. Yep. So you go ahead and move you guys. Four, one, two, um, three. So I move there. You guys are okay. running around like circles. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's good. And then that it's the goal. Eight, five, uh, eggs move at the start of the second phase. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So first phase, command actions. Um, I'm thinking we keep moving. Do we want to slow down so we can get better shots, or keep going fast and away? We I, could potentially I, I, hit both the big ship and one of the little ships with our eggs this turn. Yep. We yeah. use the one on the right to hit the little one. And then the lower actively one have the second up, egg. Hits the bigger one. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't need to... Like, I feel like we probably shouldn't go too far in that direction. Mm -hmm. Like, we probably want to come that's back down. We yeah. down yeah. That's, that's the bit. only ship we can't get okay. with the egg. And that one fighter back there. Okay, so you are doing another maneuver. Is that right, Chuck? Yeah. yeah. All right. So your engines yeah. took damage. So what are your engines at now, Cheetah? Uh, well, we fixed them back up to three. Oh, okay. You fixed them. Never mind. So you're good. So it's difficulty seven. Nice. Twelve. <laughs> okay. So you can get a bonus. You can either get a plus one to your defense, or you can get an extra 45 degree rotation as your unexpected consequence. Oh, if we do Ooh. that extra rotation, we're facing straight down. Yeah. I like that. What you want to do? Okay, do That's it, man. We're going to do extra rotation. You're right. Perfect. Anybody else doing command? Are commands? we sticking with four? Um, I don't want to... I don't think we should slow down. We could bump it up to five. Yeah. Going to five. There's... Okay. There's... Okay. All right. Dump, 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 dump. Anybody doing more command actions? I'm good. Okay, I don't so then think so. I will go ahead and attempt to maneuver on mine. So 11 plus 2 is 13. So that's a success. So I'm going to rotate and I'm going to increase my speed. Uh, and that's that. All right, second phase. So you, you can move your ordinance before you take any actions. 
So the egg to the right bumps into the little ship to the left, and then the other egg comes up to the... Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. So um, in this game, there's what's called ramming. So if one ship of some kind ends their movement on the same ship, or on the same, uh, on the same space as another ship, then you can potentially do ram. Ordinance can only ram other ordnance. So like mm. eggs can your your mines can ram the uh, the little fighter guys, but they can't ram like the big ship. Uh, the thing okay. with ramming though is that ramming what happens when you ram is that you everyone has to make a command test first and then you to see if like you kind of keep control. And then we each like each side gets to actively choose to do five general damage to both. So that means like because we're ramming together, like mm -hmm. I do five damage, general damage to you and you can decide to do five general damage back, which means we would take 10 damage. Each of us would take 10 because it's like a, 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 a collision. So it's a question of whether you think it's better to do the ram or just to attack with them. So that's up to you. Yeah, I know like, they're mine. You can only attack, attack with each fighter. weapon. Attack. So, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I, I feel like using the active attack on the big ship might be better and doing the ram like the mutually assured destruction on the little yeah, guy. We're going to blow up that mine anyway. What's the uh, with the ordinance? Can they like move one, but then they can so also attack? I at think a range your of warheads, one? I think your warheads, they have uh, like they, they, I think they're. So it has a range of one. Yeah, they have a range of one, did... but a max range of two. So they can take the yeah. careful shot, but they can't attack and outside of two. I, I think we could ordinance hit. can't ram other ordnance. Like it can attack other ordnance, but no, I think ordinances can can do it. I think it's what's when there's the disparity. So okay. we could have both of our ordnance hit the main ship then, right? Can we say that again? Good job. Joe's saying we have both eggs blow up at the main ship and ignore the little fighters. I wouldn't so we do that. The, you so when a ordinance try an ordinance cannot ram a big ship. So like well, you wouldn't get any damage from that. Yeah, so we're not all talking happens, about okay. ramming in this situation, just actually doing the special egg beam attack. Mm-hmm. And I think because you have because your eggs attack individually, I think you actually can take individual attacks with them because they attack separately from one another. Oh. And, and awesome. fire, fire is unrestricted use anyway. So like mm -hmm. fire is one of the things that we can do. We can successfully fire multiple times in a round. That's exactly. awesome. So you you, okay. you are in a position where one of them could take a careful shot and one of them can do a fire on this round. Yeah, the, second the one that's already up that close does the regular fire. The one that's two away. This one hasn't shot. moved yet, though, right? No, we could move it. We could move like, it like right here there. or here, yeah. And then we don't have to worry and about have careful them both. shots. Oh my yeah. Careful shot, though, isn't a bad thing to take because it does, inc for, for the egg, it would increase its shield damage. Hmm. Well, you guys are, like, your guns... Actually, no, wait, that's your, that's your turret. I'm sorry, that's your turret. Never mind, mm -hmm. ignore that. Let's double egg this big ship. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's I feel like there's a joke <laughs> in here somewhere. <laughs> okay. We're not gonna take that joke. But we yeah. all know what it is. No. Okay. okay. So it's your okay. guys' turn. Four actions, because Dr. T is already gone. Yeah. So the four of you can take. So you don't have to attack right off the bat. If you guys wanted to do another calibrate to try to get the plus five. Mm. And don't forget. If you, I'm not sure what your shield situation is, but you can also, I don't think you're divert. We... The one thing I should say is like, there's a divert power that does like the double stuff. I don't think mm -hmm. it works for warheads. Mm -hmm. And so they, so you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to do it for this, but you could lock on possibly. We don't have your... enough shields anyway. <laughs> so we have to, we we're going to have on. to do a damage control um, mm -hmm. because okay. we took, I mean, we took one sensor. So like, I suppose we could just deal with one sensor damage, but we're down to three shields. Yeah, definitely damage so, control. Damage control seems like it should be done. I can do that as my engineering and to free up mm -hmm. other people to do operations and gunnery stuff. I when could do... help with the damage control. Cool. I could do reload to give us munitions if we really want to go all in on these eggs. And then have 
uh, Zatek and Maya both do, because we need a person to detonate each egg. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. It's an action. Yeah. What um what role is that? It's is that the weapon. Gunnery? It's not. A, it's not a gunnery. It's the weapons role. Oh. You yeah, guys have. I would make a gunnery check right? to give you munitions, but then the eggs have their own. Oh, it's just okay. It's like yeah. A, so it doesn't matter who does it. It's just the role. Skill role. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I got a fourteen over ten on the. Um, okay. Damage control. Damage control. All right. So you can take. Uh, you can choose to either take a plus two, like repair two of your attribute, or you can choose to take an extra three shield damage back. Yeah, we only had one damage to sensor, so sensor is going to go mm. back up to full four of four, um, okay. and then so I'll take... take the extra three, which will put us from three shields up to thirteen shields. Okay, nice. sounds good. Thank you okay. for the assistance, and Gita continues to be polite and thank her Nephilim helper. Yay. Okay, three actions left. Who's doing what? I'll load yeah, up. I'll definitely do one of the egg attacks. Yeah, I'm cause... doing the other egg. Yeah. If I do gunnery first, you guys can have munitions potentially available with that. Uh, sure. I don't think Before thermal. I... Yeah, thermalex can't use munitions. Well, then no... never mind. Yeah, just I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just looking. There's there's a lot of different you should... keywords. Does that make sense? Shoot at the other. Somebody can that scan to get rid of the lock on if we oh. wanted to. Yeah, that's a good one. Because they locked on us last time. Yeah, it's like a double-edged sword with the munitions things, because like normally a gun can't fire if it has zero munitions, but if you have the no munitions mm. trait, you can. But it also means I don't think you actually can. You don't have a munitions pool, so there's nothing to actually use. When I would be I utter garbage at getting rid of that scan. scan as operations because I get a bonus to my operations. So and maybe that, yeah, you do you do want scan my do the other do. egg? Yeah. Yeah. So you that's so the best. second kill do the eggs and I'll do scan to get rid of the Okay. One. Cool. Okay. Uh and we'll have Sassy and Adi help with the two egg de- detonations. Nice. Okay. Because it works what so well is last time. The, uh, yeah. what's our sensor <laughs> thing at right now? Back up to full four. Okay. So difficulty of eight on this operations test for Maya to scan. Uh, that is a 15. Okay, so 15. Very, very good. Nice. It'll have an unexpected consequence. You're scanning. Um, so, uh, positive benefit when, is you can gain... 16 and above is unexpected? It's plus four. four it's four above. over your target. And your target was like a like target. an eight or something. Right. Yeah, mm. I was thinking of 12. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, normally it's, so it's I, a 16. I think normally you have to choose between adding the locked on and removing the locked on. Right. So because you have an unexpected consequence, I'm going to say you get the benefits of both. So you can both <gasps> remove your locked yes. on and add locked on. And which target? I'm assuming the big ship you want it on. Please. Okay. So let me remove yours. <laughs> Nice okay. work. Well done. Nice. Okay. So That's Maya hope and... that like yields something. Turns the yeah. tide, maybe. Adi is looking at you like you are efficient. If you had 17 more tentacles, you could be even more efficient. It's because he's helping you scan. The two of you are on the system. He's got four arms, don't forget. So he's like, you should speak with Dr. Captain Toronto to give you additional arms and tentacles for more efficiency. <laughs> she will nod. Okay. Roll her eyes. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, no. <laughs> she thinks very good. You know how these Nephilim boys are? They're so shallow. They won't even look at you if you don't have four tentacles. So, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> All right. So we've got attacks coming. You guys are both just yeah. going to do straight up fire. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So yep. you, because it's locked on, your mm-hmm. eggs have a benefit of plus four when attacking a locked on target. So both of you will have plus four from that, which stacks with your calibrate. So what's your calibrate? Ooh, four. Plus four. So that's plus eight. And so you have wow. so you're rolling forty six plus eight right now. Wait, you Wait. Each got a helper. Plus nine. Plus nine. Oh yeah. Plus nine. Forty eight plus nine. Oh yeah, Sask, uh, Sask and Winnie are, are helping out. Sure. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. D sixes. 
Okay. 46. 48. Okay. Just sneaking that in there. 46. I got a six. <laughs> okay. I did two. Okay. Oh, so oh, 11. Yeah. Uh, 16, 20 with a six on there. And I got All a 23. Right. Nice. So those are both successes. Uh, what was your what was your total kill? 20? 20. Okay. Both of you are not just a success. It's got a defense of 16. So you're four above what's necessary. So both of you will get an yes. unexpected consequence for it. So let's let's try to keep this. Oh, God. You guys might blow this freaking thing up. Um, yeah. I was going to start trying to do like combat jumps. Or lock on is to, the, the, for these eggs. It's the plus four. That the, it's the extra plus four. That got. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Just trying yeah, to no get this great. Uh, okay. Oh, God. So... <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So let's do one at a time. Zatek. Um, yeah. All right. So let's do yours first. So you had 23. Mm -hmm. You will get a, and you did fire. So. Yep. And I got a six. You're and you get the benefits of both, right? Yes. So you're going to get plus three shield damage to this and plus one crit damage. Sweet. So what that means is. What's your sensor is that, Melissa? Four? Yes, four. Okay, so that means you're you're gonna do you're gonna do ten shield damage. Holy crap. Uh it still has some shields left, but not much. And then you're going to do uh six crit damage. Ooh. Their armor their armor wow. will, will will cut down that that down to three, but they're still gonna take three points of, of crit damage to their crew. So this thing explodes, Ooh. maybe like on an airlock or something, and it causes oh this God. whole breach. And you just watch those of you who are like, maybe maybe there's like this little camera on the thermal exit, and you get to watch up until that dying moment. And you just see like the last thing you see is this thing exploding, and you see people moving past and the portholes racing. And then the rest of us see just the bodies just suddenly funneling out into space now from where it just ruptured. Okay. Jesus Christ. Three freaking crew damage. Amazing. Wow. All right. All right. It, it, they're still, fortunately, they actually have a very good crew. So they're still in the positive. Now we go to kill. <laughs> so kill you also. So you, I'll give you a choice. Kill, do you want to do extra shield damage or do you want to do extra crit damage? I like doing crit damage. Okay. So you're going to do. And this is do... a fire, not a. Um... Doesn't matter. Careful Doesn't shot, matter right? for them. Doesn't oh, matter. Oh, that's for right. Them. That's right. Okay, so this is going to do seven points of shield damage. You just it 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 still has a couple bits of shield damage left, but or shield <laughs> left, but not much. I haven't done a single like repair action yet. So uh, okay, and then your crit damage is six. So let's see where it goes to power. So this time, which is going to put it in the negative. Okay. Yes. So, because it's in the negative, it's now on fire. Yes! And Wait. so, your, so while the text comes in on the starboard side and blows up the starboard airlock, and you see a bunch of people funnel, like, fly out into space before the whole, the, the bulkheads come down to stop the breach, Kills comes up from behind and gets right into that power generator, and it explodes, and we see this kind of cascading effect, and you can hear, like, you can hear sort of this, the, the reverberation sort of like coming through on your sensors and inside the ship fires are now starting to pop up as all these power conduits are overloading. <laughs> and although both of your eggs are, are gone and bye bye, they went out with a friggin bang. Like, it was really, really good. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. So shield. So when, the, when you're on fire, I suffer one damage to a random attribute at the start of the turn until I make a successful damage control system rolls before. So I can still try to do that. Now I get to go. So I, I actually do get to go. So definitely um, give Sass a fist bump. We were talking about these eggs before. <laughs> For Why sure. You attacking me. <laughs> oh, I will hit you back now. <laughs> oh God, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> All right. That'd be um, hilarious. All right, so start of my second phase, my fighters are going to move. One, two. One's going to move there. 
One's going to move there. So I have two more that are kind of on your starboard side. Close again. Um, okay. So I am going to... I know I said that you guys can't do combat jumps, but I can do combat jumps because Wait, I'm a pirate and pirates have access to lay dust in this system and control it. So I'm going to attempt a combat what? jump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the hell? This you is just, what you've been doing with your turns. You just <laughs> teabagged my ship. They don't want to hang out. did. Especially when the teabag exploded. Like, what's going <laughs> on? <laughs> We're two eggs. Yeah, that fits. Okay. Just so everyone um, knows, you have to have performed five successful rolls of combat jump to be able to get to the point of jumping. Unless... You have a specific trait that lets you jump a little bit quicker, which I do. Oh, so, so suck fancy. It. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So let me try my stupid combat jump. Okay. So Good points and cowardice. <laughs> <laughs> they destroyed like a bunch of ships. Sorry. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. Man, I didn't know the heroes of the story were going to show up. It's bullshit. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, there's good, good thing is their CPU isn't damaged yet, so they're still they're still good on that. Okay, uh, that is uh, fifteen or no sixteen. There's a sixteen, which is an unexpected consequence. So I think I get a bonus uh, to jumping. Let me see. Um, oh, I think I should have. Sh- I, I, I'm sorry. I, I meant to show this to you guys. There you go. I'm not sure if I showed it to you before. My bad. Um, my, hang on one I just sec. see a title. Yeah, I forgot to change the ownership of it. This was the list of stuff I was just brainstorming. Okay. Hopefully you see it now. All right. Oh, okay. So it's going to gain an extra successful combat jump, basically. Okay. All right. So that's one of my actions. Second action, I need to do damage control to try to put this fire out. So I'm going to do damage control. My crew is sticking together. Though, unfortunately, my crew is now down to a one. So whereas before it was, I think, a four. And so this is oh, actually going to be a, an 11. This is not an easy test, uh, in fact. So that's OK. I got it. Uh, I did get it, though. OK, so I put the fire out. And I will heal one point of the crew damage. Oh, no, I'm going to hit heal the power because the power went into the negative. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'm going to go ahead and repair. So my power is now to zero. So fire is out, but my power is at zero. That's my that's two actions. Uh, third action. I will. <laughs> As we what? as we look out our starboard side and see two fighters hanging out, <laughs> and you know what, I'm here. I'm gonna go ahead and sh- screw it. I'm just gonna fire at you guys. Uh, so okay, yeah, I'm gonna try. shoot the railgun at you. I might as well. Oh, uh, I'm gonna shoot the railgun at you because you're in range. Uh, careful shot. I got like a bunch of bonuses, but I rolled like shit. Uh, a one, a one, and a two. So that's oh, not, no. not good enough. So the railgun misses and like the interference from the Legion ship probably caused a problem. Uh, but then I'm gonna have the fighters attack as well. Uh, so they're going to take fire. So they're going to take like a plus six, I think on this. And I got a six and a five and a three, 11, 14. It's like, I think like it's like a, like a 19. Um, oh yeah. Defense is well, you guys aren't so locked on, over. so my five doesn't count, but my six does. So I will do crit damage still to you. Um, and because I got over your defense by more than four, I'm going to take the extra crit. So I'm okay. going to say you're taking five critical damage. Uh, you can subtract your armor, so you're going to end up taking two, two to your CPU. Oof. Uh-oh. That's not good for... combat jump. Next time for order of who goes first in second phase. Okay. 
So uh, there's top one left of, in our CPUs. Top of the next round. We'll move this. We'll try moving this fast because uh, all I need is one more Ooh. combat jump and they can get out of here. Uh, what is your velocity? Four. Five. I think Four. we bumped up, right? Oh, you, we did bump we it. Did take sorry, it sorry. Five. five. Oh, that's right. Okay. So move sorry. yourself five spaces. And as you're moving through that green cloud, you see that whatever kind oh, of no. gas has been lingering starts to get fed into maybe your lay dust collectors or maybe just your exhaust and starts to screw around with your engines. I need someone to make an engineering test as this is what's called a, uh, a technical obstruction. So engineering so test difficulty 12. Anyone can do it. I don't care. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you can do it or I can do it. I, I got the plus two, so. Yeah, should do it. Uh, six to three and a three. So, so it's 14. 12. You're good. Okay, so you're good. You're able to flush that before whatever with that gas that kind of got sucked in, you're able to flush that out before anything might have happened. Uh, and then you can continue your movement so you can go your full five. Sweet. Technical I've got obstruction. Four, one, two, three, four. So there I go. Okay. Just to clarify, this is a technical obstruction, right? It is. So, so you get a minus two to all minus rolls. two to all your system rolls until the end of this, because okay. whatever got sucked in the vents here or whatever it might have been is kind of th like, although Gita was able to flush it and keep the engines from exploding, it's still sort of messing with your systems until you get out of this little cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also get your engines to your defense. Your defense does go up too. Nice. All right. First phase, Chuck, anything you're doing with command? Uh, I would like to turn us that way. Okay. Go ahead and roll your maneuver. Go. We'll make this our last round regardless, and then we'll cut. I know we're over. Yep. I'm sorry. Oh, we are, aren't we? Okay. Um, Is it still... Did the the dust affect this roll? It's all system roll. So every single roll okay. is turned, basically. A system roll is essentially yeah. operations, command, gunnery, or engineering. What was our target? It was originally seven. I think it's seven. And then I, I think your sensors are healed, right, Melissa? Yeah. Yeah, sensors are fine. Mm -hmm. I th uh, what about you? So you were doing maneuver? So maneuver yeah. is 10 minus engines. Wait, Which and engines are fine, so it's still seven. Okay. Okay. I just, I for, didn't hear the number Jeff said for the dusty dust. Uh, so... So even still, that's that's still good. I think you're okay. you're solid. Okay. So you've ro rotated already. You can increase or decrease your speed as you see fit. And again, you can four. remember that oh. you can move your velocity based upon your engine score. It's not just plus and one. So if you wanted to go multiple up or down, you're welcome to do that. Max of six, though. There's mechanically, there's nothing more than six. Uh, I'll take this down to three, actually. Okay. Okay. And we, we don't right. hit that debris. Anybody else for commands? Nope. Okay. Nope. Uh, one thing I want to mention real quick, Jeff. Uh, yeah. I don't get double benefits on attack rolls, only skill rolls. So I shouldn't okay. have done the extra shield damage. It's a ways back. We'll just we'll we'll just you know, I'll find a way to screw you later. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> first phase is over for you guys. I'm gonna do a full burn. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll do it for a full burn. Oh, geez. That's going to be close. Um, fortunately, my engines are okay. So that's a success. Okay, good. Whew, right on the dot. I almost failed that. All right, so I'm going to rotate 45 degrees to my port. Then I'm going to move forward one. And I am literally on the edge of the map. Um, Okay. So hard to hit. So they're so they're. You get the sense that that your mind's exploding yeah. on it might be uh, <laughs> might have changed the complexion of that their was strategies. the last draw. I mean, <laughs> do we go like full spite? Do we do a calibrate and then a gunnery to max out our munitions and just do that one last hail mary with I full munitions would. and a plus five? <laughs> go for I'm it. Down for that. Yeah. yeah. Me too. All right, who's uh, doing what's the, the one that doubles an action to divert power, which would work on the turret? Yeah, uh, so I, we, we could divert our power, gunnery, 13. and calibrate. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's do it. 
Right, yes. I'll do okay. a divert power. Dirty, I like my my engineer didn't <laughs> count for my action, did it? Or did it? No, no. That was just a free thing to okay. move through. Don't forget though, with me minus power? two to all your rolls yeah. this round because of the because mm -hmm. you guys are in this this gas club. Mm -hmm. Uh Wayne yeah. will help so, with your power diversion. Uh, okay, thank you. Need a divert power. Divert power and then we're that'll give us the plus two and then I can do the calibrate, which is operations. And then okay. kill does gunnery. So divert power, are you guys putting divert power to the attack? No. Yeah. Okay. So if you're All okay, right. so you, So it sounds like non warhead yeah, okay. He's using the turret, so it's fine. So Jita, you're doing divert power. Maya's gonna do the last calibrate, because I think you guys are at plus four. Kill's gonna mm -hmm. shoot. So what is I'll the do gunnery? Is if I do gunnery, that'll give us full munitions. So whoever does shoot can then add those extra dice onto the shot. Okay. Okay. Done. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll do fire. All right. So Gita, let's start with you with your dirt revert power. 14 minus your power is your difficulty. Yeah, so you guys have a power of three. So difficulty of 11. Actually. Yeah. Greg, the you want to swap, dude? Yeah. I was, I was going to say. Calibrate and I'll do guttering. Or I'll yeah. do okay. shooting. Yeah. yeah. So I was successful. Okay. So okay. our shields go from 13 down to seven and then double effects on the whatever attack roll is happening later. On the turret gun. Yeah, on the turret shot. Yes. What was your total roll? Okay. Did you get any bonuses? No, I did not. Okay. All right. Uh, who's doing calibrate? That would be me. All right. It's a tech. Go ahead and let's do the calibrate roll. So uh, what's our target? 14 minus your sensors. Your sensors is four, so it's a 10. Sensors are four. Audi will okay. help with uh, this as well. I'm going to burn my Audi last with it. grit. Okay. So minus two from the cloud, plus one from Audi. So minus one from the floating stuff. Okay. And we have to hit a 14? No, 10. Or a 10? I'm at a nine. Uh, I can do an audience boost. Did you okay. account for Audi helping you? Yes. Uh, because I have the minus two from the okay. system. That balanced out with my plus one and okay yeah. so you're just rolling flat okay so yeah you're one yeah. short if you wanted to audience boost the the two see if you can get a knock a three out got it, it that's right that's on the that's dot <laughs> right yeah. on the dot okay uh, so your your calibrate is now fully you're fully calibrated so yeah, plus five to shield five. plus five to Yay. hit okay um okay. so then kill you're doing a reload a yep. rearm so it's 12 minus so your crew, so it's a mm -hmm. 10, is what you need. Okay. Flat roll. I've got a plus two and a minus two, so just flat roll. Uh, Sassy will help with this one. You're I'll doing use my wrong. last crit. <laughs> Sassy's right. I was it. doing it very wrong. I had <laughs> two ones and a three. Let me, oh, gosh. let me do it. You keep doing it. Okay, well, yeah, okay. Clearly, Sassy knew it was up, because that took me up to a 13. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is a success. You get all your munitions back, so you have your full three munitions for Maya to take a ridiculous hail in the merry shot. Yes. So hell yes, and we're still locked on, so we get a plus four, right? Yeah. Uh, that that's not I, is that, that was, we, we that's were locked on to the big ship, not the little things. No, no, no. You're 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 locked on, but you get a plus two for your turret. The plus four was for your eggs. It's different things for different oh, weapons. Oh, okay, yeah. But it's still, yeah. still a plus. So essentially, it, it it cancels out your your penalty for the gas. Mm -hmm. So okay. calculate all your other bonuses. Uh, five from calibrate. Five from calibrate, and then minus you can take two munitions. From the gas. And then right. plus okay. two from the plus from the lock two on. From the whatever. Mm -hmm. Is there and anything however many munitions? Here? And then 3d6 muni munitions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Was there any oh, from Jita's diverting power? That's only if it's so, successful. You have to hit with it yeah, first. Yeah, it's the right. effect. Uh, so I rolled a 26 plus my 5. Okay, 26 so, plus 5 is 31. Yeah. Or, your target was 30, so that actually hits. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. And two sixes. Oh, nice. Okay. Two sixes. Okay. Uh, so I assume you're going to want to use them for crit damage. Yes. Please. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's five crit damage. Divert power, uh, is going to give you, uh, 
so it's good if this is an attack it doesn't cause such emissions it's, okay so this is <laughs> jesus christ all right so you're gonna get i think it triggers twice so i don't think it's like you're dealing 10 i think it's you deal you deal five and five so you basically do a double um, shot essentially mm -hmm. as i think how it works so you do f two yeah, five right. yeah i think you did two shots of five so let's let's handle crit Holy damage shit. and then i'll do shield damage after that so it's five twice so it's gonna take it's gonna take a total of four but two different ways. So the first two damage is going to be against its power, which puts oh. it back into negative two. But it, so it puts fire. it at negative two. So it's on Ooh. fire again. Okay. <laughs> then uh, <laughs> the second one is to its sensors, which puts it down to one. So that's not this so is okay. Such a great idea, everyone. <laughs> the fun thing is you're about to get more critical damage because your first attack is going to do some shield damage. So you did, uh, did you do careful shot? I'm assuming. I don't think I called it out. So I, it feels cheap to say that okay. in retrospect, but. All right, so it's five. So it's gonna be five shield damage the first time, which is enough to bring its shields all the way down to zero, which triggers a critical hit. Oh. So it's gonna take more damage to its power again. It is. Oh. If it takes oh one more hit to its power, it's going to explode. Um, <gasps> I mean, technically, I can just sort of pull them all the way back, I think. Because there's like different rules Maya. for the different tiers. Mm. Love it. Once you put them down to like zero, I was like getting them. So I think once they are reduced to zero, they're basically out of the fight. So I started like flying them away to do the combat jump. Holy but you guys are still attacking it. So now I'm like... Like I, I'm not. I don't think technically I, I'm supposed to go down with the negative, but if it gets the negative five, I'm gonna say it explodes. So, uh, all right. So then the next shot comes in again, and this is a hull. Okay, so it doesn't explode, but it is on freaking fire right now. <laughs> okay, is that the is your guys' turn. definition of teamwork makes the dream work. That was a great. <laughs> nice. That was job. amazing, guys. That was absolutely amazing, okay, guys. Okay, my turn. Uh, <laughs> my fighters are gonna <laughs> nope the fuck out of here. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> okay, nice. So they're they're flying away. Uh, then I'm going to first action. I'm gonna do damage control. <laughs> Jesus Christ! To put the fire out. Uh, eight, eleven, thirteen. Uh, I need 12 minus my crew. My crew is at one, so I need an 11. Okay, so I'm good. So well, the fire is out. Um, then I'm just going to attempt to get the F out of here. I can also heal some of the... <laughs> some of that power. I can only get one. I didn't do... It wasn't a great roll, so I don't get any bonuses. So it's just... So I'm still at minus three, technically, for power. So then I'm going to attempt... I need one more successful combat jump, because this one gets out of here, I think, three... Or maybe four. I might need two successful combat jumps. Okay. Okay. Run away. Run away. I think I can divert mm -hmm. power to get two. Because I do need two. I looked at it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to divert power, which is very... Mm, which isn't good for me because it's a good 17 idea. difficulty. Yeah. Do you have enough shields to drop to six? No, I don't. I can't do it. All right, I'm just going to rip a combat jump and hope I roll high enough. Because if I roll high enough, because my computers are still okay. Then you get the consequence. Yeah. It can happen. I can, I can do it. No, I can. I definitely can. Like, it's it's definitely possible. Okay, that's a six. So I'm going to re-roll that two. So it's, I'm at 10 plus two. Okay, that's five. 10 plus five is 15. Uh, plus, uh, plus two is 17. Uh, my difficulty is 12 so 17 is enough is enough to get two so you guys fire away you this turret just shot just beams of light just through the mm -hmm. through the like the all the gas all the wreckage in front of this this huge feral nephilim gate and somehow between all of that you just perfect pinpoint shots right into like its power core power core is on fire uh, they put the fire out. They try to call back their fighters. Their fighters don't have enough range. They're about to go down. And then suddenly you see in front of the bigger of the pirate ships, 
one of these kind of circular portals open up as they probably have a lay canister or something like that that allows them to do this. And then you see them <laughs> disappear, leaving their two fighters behind because their fighters <laughs> couldn't get back to their space. And so, oh, no. <laughs> and I think with that, we'll go ahead and we'll end on that, which uh, you guys kicked his ass. That was pretty good. <laughs> We that was did. Fun. Yeah. We'll, a lot of we'll end now. We'll, so we'll deal with the consequences next time. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, that was great. It yeah, was. It was nice. To, like we good. did space combat. We, we did. did. We did, did it, guys. Did. What do we think? I I, I kind of like it. It goes. It goes I, I was okay kind of with it. That was better yeah. than I expected. Like I'm always yeah, confident to do vehicle combat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah vehicle combat is What's really that? generally so like onerous. This did yeah. not feel. Yeah. Onerous. Like, there were a lot like of things that hours. you track of, it but it didn't feel it was, like a barrier. Yeah, yeah. agreed. There's yeah. a good amount of whack a mole of like we need to go mm-hmm. do this and then this and then this, mm-hmm. which I think makes sense, right? Because like in a, in a, yeah. in a yeah. cruise ship's gonna yeah. be you gotta like put out you gotta literally put fires out and stuff and all that kind of thing. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was well done. Cool. All right. So yeah. This so that's all we're so gonna be great, doing. Jeff, thank you. Yeah. All we're going to be doing as you guys travel through Kasuf Nothing is I'm just going to every stuff. session, I'm having pirates just attack you one after the other. Okay. We'll see. Well, now I don't feel bad sprinkling one or two possibilities, but uh, I definitely wanted to make sure we tried at least once. Uh, but we, we might have, but now we'll like, we'll do it if it makes sense. I won't necessarily mm-hmm. force it, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's do nice. some closer plugs. Let's get on out of here. Uh, we're going to start uh, DOK. Uh, Chuck, tell us oh. about DOK. What's going on? Uh, yeah, on Wednesdays, we got our Night Below using Dungeon Crawl Classics campaign. On Fridays, we've got our Pathfinder 2nd Edition campaign. On every other Saturday, we're doing a little mini Teenage Odyssey campaign right now. Uh, and if you've backed it and haven't filled out your survey, I judge you. And please go fill out your survey so I can send you your codes so you can get Teenage Odyssey. Fantastic. I, uh, I I filled out my code and I Good ordered job. it on drive through so it'll nice. be here. Thank you. Sometime. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, my tray. Where can we find you on the internet? I am multi place games on YouTube, where I make system agnostic or multi system uh, tabletop content that centers the team and placements that you should check out if you want to check that kind of thing out. Fantastic. Uh, as for us here on Adventure Zelda Gagging, we are off for the rest of the week as a couple of us are going to Gen Con. So no game tomorrow because Steven sucks. Uh, let's see. Thursday, no game because a couple of us aren't going to be there. So no so no Simba Room. Uh, no, no Delta Green this week. No Call of Cthulhu. We'll be back next Monday with more Alien. That should be our next stream. So I think we'll be back in time for that. But otherwise, go check out what Chuck's doing uh, and uh, have a great rest of your week. And if you're at Gen Con and you see one of us with uh, a really cheap Adventures in the Gagging shirt on, uh, come say hi uh, because we'll be there. Um, let's go ahead and raid Happy Jack's RPG. They're also playing space shenanigans games. So have a great rest of your night. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.